ロスドーンシュ What is up, everybody? Welcome Happy Friday, Shiro Show. show. Welcome in. We are back. I'm back. Dan's back. <laughs> oh, oh Dan, Dan felt left We're out last week. <laughs> no, you're yeah, back, Dan. It's okay. Dan, it's okay. Dan was Dan, Dan break last week. You're Dan's back cheated. and you're beautiful as ever. No. Oh, gosh, thanks. <laughs> well, you asked me how oh, you look. I thought you. <laughs> beautiful Dan. I like seeing Dan's beautiful face. So we need yeah. him out to thanks, Pat. get you him too. out to uh, Game On Expo. And hey, all the viewers are back. Thank all the you for are back. watching. We'll we got into another 19, huge Shiro show. 20 folks so far. We're we got Wiener Bob, Sega. Man. He's first. We got Fart Daily. Oh, yeah. He's owning on the uh, <laughs> Steep Slope Sliders yeah, competition is. just completely yeah. across the board. So kudos to Fart Daily. Uh, we got Sasquatch in Time. Yeah, we got Thank Tales you, of homie. Saturn, Christian Good Marte, Scotty Mo, Dragons of Saturn. Yep. Uh, Pudgy's Man. there. Sh Thanks to the Team Show sending me an X-Band modem. You are welcome. Enjoy your X-Band. Hopefully we'll see you online. Absolutely. Thanks. Analog, Black Sheep, Oliver Steinman. Yep. Have you any wool? Neil Henderson. Oh, you said Stoneman. Moose is here. Moose, out. Yeah, oh. Moose Tracks is here. Thanks for the Thanks. five bucks or four. Five from, thank you. Technically four ninety nine. Did somebody <laughs> do ring the rinkster? I don't know what that means, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for the five dollars. Four ninety nine. Uh Michael Friesch. Con artist, con <laughs> Corona Lay. I love that. I love that name, con artist. Uh, Mister Woden, Woden's Dag, <laughs> uh, David Zaney, Lee Benson, Eddie G, Shadow Leave Mask, and Sweet Like Sugar. Y'all, y'all got in early enough for me to announce your names. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get roll right into the show. So give us a thumbs up if you can. We love it. We appreciate yeah. it, and we'll move it right along. Yep. Honestly, How? Though, Dave, the things you think that are precious, I don't understand. What is that? What do you mean? Are you reeling in the years? Oh, right. Okay. Just throwing away the time. Sorry. Aye, I, was aye, aye. I was listening he, to Camp by a Thrill before I started. I know. I he, was listening, oh. he was listening. We were listening to Steely yeah, yeah. Dan on, on the trip as well. You can imagine. Yeah, we were listening nice. to, uh, a, I think we are Asia, and then I think we, did we just listen to Donald Fagan's solo thing? I can't remember. We did. Yeah, we did. Uh, so I really want to ask Dan, so how... <laughs> How was, uh, what have you been up to since we're going to yeah. talk about the, what we were up to last week. Uh, tell us what you've Wait, been up to. Up Any to. pickups? Uh, yeah, actually I will discuss them briefly. I got a couple of, uh, anime mm. Blu-rays. Um, they were like half off. They were on sale. Oh, wow. Oh, um, nice. So Hold them up to the I camera. Had to go for it. Yeah. So the first one, I have the first project ACO mm. film, um, uh, which oh, I was a little high. Sorry with that. A uh, little, little too high. <clears throat> so Project ACO, which is, I think, streaming on Crunchyroll, uh, but I hadn't checked it out, um, but it, it looked cool. I'd seen like clips online. And then I also got the OVA series Gunbuster. Mm -hmm. Gun I love Busta. Gunbuster. Yeah. Now this is not streaming anywhere. If there's um, and no you can only, in your house. Who you can you only call? watch this uh, on physical media uh, unless you pirate it. I don't know. Um, either way, that looked cool too. Um, so yeah, I got both of these and I watched Project Echo. It is pretty cool. A little goofy, um, but still a lot of fun. Uh, it has a reversible the the cover. There's like a lot of panty shots and stuff. It is panty shot central. Yes. These are okay, both edgy the anime. One. Okay, I, I figured Project there's... Echo is literally paying shots to the movie. I guess Project okay. Echo, fun fact, used to be, uh, it was originally going to be a hentai uh, movie, hentai animation. Mm -hmm. And then, like, partway through, they decided, you know what? This concept's too cool. Let's make it in, like, an actual movie. But they left, like, there is a little bit of nudity in it. And there's, like, one scene that they left from the original hentai, like, early work they did of one of the other characters who's just, like, uh, in, in a hot springs bath. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, yeah, uh, Gunbuster also has nudity. So if you're sensitive to that sort of thing, um, don't watch those probably. But so it's literally uh, a Gunbuster. Okay, way, so Dan, yeah, like have a, put, Dan have, have they're cool. have, they're like mecha action girl, brown eyed girls in mechs fighting things. Wait, you uh, say brown eyed girls? They're both brown eyed girls. Yeah, the the protagonist. My brown eyed girl. Do, 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 hey Dan, do, do, do. have Pudgy well, do yeah, me a well, favor. Well. Have Pudgy do me a favor and tilt your camera down just a tad. Okay, because we're cutting off up, your head here. Honey, we need the camera tilted down a little bit, up, I guess. Down. Folks can folks get to see the, on it. behind it's the scenes. Taking taking folks behind the scenes here. <laughs> 
Uh, other way, other way. Yeah, yeah there you go. There, that's no, that okay. was perfect. She was good. No, she was it good was. There. It was good. Like up, tilt it down. Up. She needs to tilt it down. Tilt the camera oh, down. 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 Tilt the camera down. Yeah. Okay. Tilt down. it down. Are we good? Cut off. No, your head's cut off. I need her to tilt it down. I need yeah, her to. Day, yeah. You're tilting it up, not down. Fine. If you tilt it down, basically, I need more of. I need more. Look. His head's cut off. Dan, Dave's got some directional issues today. Okay, so okay. I shouldn't direct films. That, that, yeah, we're good. I should not be a DP. Thank you, Bunny. Thank you, Bunny. All right, appreciate yes, it. Up is down, I know, down I know what you meant, up. though, Dave. I know what you meant. <laughs> For the vertical uh, axes was inverted there. That's right. Okay, so um, we're good to go. We're good to go. Okay, so anyway, see, I got those couple of anime, and I've been watching them. There's still a couple more episodes of Gunbuster I have to watch, mm -hmm. um, but I watched the first four. They're cool. It's directed by Hideki Anno and made by Gainax uh, several years before they would go on to make Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, so, And you can really since the 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 influence there this is like the proto evangelion mm -hmm. um yeah it's uh, you can make a lot of comparisons you could probably write a thesis paper about how many comparisons you can make between the, the two mm -hmm. a, a teenager who it gets has to get into the robot to fight aliens from outer space but then a tragedy happens so they are psychologically unable to get into the robot but they have to get into the robot and sounds pretty yeah, japanese sounds like to me. it's great <laughs> it's very japanese yeah it's very hidekiano oh speaking uh, of that anyway. they had a end of evangelion in theaters this weekend Oh, did they? Oh, oh really? Yeah, wasn't it just End of Evangelion? The yeah, end of I really wanted to go yeah. see it. I completely forgot, but we were too, I was going to bring it up to Dave, but I forgot, and I think we were too busy anyways. Mm. Dan, what have oh. you been playing? What have you been playing? What have I been playing? Yeah. Uh, I, I got to play a little bit of Unicorn Overlord, mm. um, which is a fun game. I got sucked into it like the first Vanilla night. Way. I played like three and a half hours straight. <laughs> yeah, right. it's the Vanillaware game I showed a couple weeks ago. <laughs> um, That's promising. You got sucked in? So it's a yeah, I got sucked in. Nice. Yeah, it, was, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, and I've been playing a lot of PSO2. Uh, I, it's been busy. I, I've been uh, practicing my trumpet a lot, so yeah. I haven't had a whole lot of time in the evenings nice. for yeah. for playing games. So, but hopefully after I get through Easter, if, I'll it, have it some likes, more time. If it's like Persona. You're leveling up your proficiency at trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I like that's the tough to, thing when you come talk. home. You're like, do I study? Do I read? Do I like build lock picks or do I practice? Do I play the trumpet? <laughs> like, do I play the trumpet? Too much, Dave. I have been <laughs> yeah, playing. I've been I've been loving the hell out of it. It's been a lot of fun. That's I'm gonna good. talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah, but no, Dave. I mean, I think the fair thing was Dan's when you you played the Soccer Wars intro on trumpet. Mm -hmm. That was sick. Oh, oh yeah. did you like yeah. that? Oh, I love that. I love that. That was amazing. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, uh, maybe I'll, I'll record. Uh, mm. I'll record dun, the whole dun, thing dun, and dun, um, dun. I'll have to put it on YouTube because it's too long to put in Discord. Yeah, definitely. I'd be down. But she says my trumpeter. Though, yeah, I'm her trumpeter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. So uh, <laughs> should we get into the news, or did you guys have anything else you wanted to talk about? I guess we could talk about our updates during the news, if you want. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah what we're we... talking about Game On Expo, so we'll just jump. We to are, that, but... and we've got a ton of news to cover, so we'll get right mm -hmm. into it. Anyway, we're glad to be back in the saddle or whatever in the on the couch. On the couch. On the couch. <laughs> so let's bring up the browser. Okay. And uh, talk some Saturn news. Saturn news. Saturn news. Uh, Saturn news. Uh, all those pretty people. We're going way back. Way back. Let's go all the way back to Frog Bowl. Oh, is Frog Bowl in the that. chat by any chance? If he is, shouts out for. I think shouts, I saw him text. Shouts Froggy. Uh, no, but I, I don't see him it. here. I don't see him here. But anyway, oh, we're talking about you. It's, it's so like, if you're it's listening like 3 later. It's in, in the UK, so. It's 10 p.m. in the UK right now. I was close. I, was I think he's in enough. France, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 I believe it's so. Time, so maybe right? it's like it's a, it's 11? An hour back. Yeah. So okay. he, they're like five hours ahead of me. So that's 11, 11 p.m.? Yeah, maybe. So yeah, that's kind of like. But then again. Yeah, he, he used to join us when it was uh, 12 his time, <laughs> so I, yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, Frog Bull put out a thing. Uh, he messaged us, like, he messaged me, like, at 7 in the morning when I was just waking up, and it was like, do you want me to send you a copy of this? I'm like, hell yeah, I want you to send me a copy. And uh, what is this? Uh, like, this is a, like, original, but it was it's kind of like 
an homage, I guess, to the uh, what what would you call those the the Rogue Squadron games? But it's his own yeah. thing because it's like a new mission, and this is for Dreamcast. So uh, he, you know, same same dude you guys might know did the Metal Gear Solid uh, demo on the Saturn, and also the Final Fantasy VII kind of like proof of concept performance demo, I guess, on the Saturn. Also did uh, Metal Gear Solid Two on the Dreamcast. Uh, these, mm -hmm. Those were just like short little performance demos. Put out this like one level kind of uh, game demo of uh, his his new game called Star Wars Dream of the Rebellion. I, I quickly like did a Google search when he sent this to me because I was like, Dream of the Rebellion, is this something that exists? Is he porting something? No, this is a mm -hmm. brand new thing that he kind of did in the vein of uh, Rogue Squadron, and it very it very much is reminiscent of Rogue Squadron. He used yeah. uh, what did he, he used um, uh, AI to do uh, Anthony Daniels C3PO. It worked out pretty well uh, to to you know talk about the mission and go over the briefing of the the craft. Mm -hmm. Just don't tell and, him that he didn't pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then uh, and then no wait is this out yet? Because I know he said like a week ago he said it was going to be released to the public. So has this gone out to the public yet? I'm actually not sure. Yeah, I'm I, not sure I either. Checked. Yeah, I hadn't checked. I know it was on his Patreon, and I know that uh, as of a week ago, you could support his Patreon and get access to this. But uh, I believe what he said was that it was going to go public so folks could download it and play it. Essentially, yeah. it's a chase level where you're chasing after the Star, uh, the star uh, Destroyer? Yeah, Star Destroyer. Yeah, Star Destroyer. I had a brain fart there. And uh, and TIE Fighters are coming at you, and you have to avoid their fire, and it's it's not easy folks asked me during my stream whether uh there were actually like silver and gold medals and i didn't think there were but there actually are he said he confirmed there actually are silver and gold medals you just have to get good you know so i died yeah. a lot and i got like 50 percent accuracy at best um we went ahead and uh uh embedded the what the sega guys video that that james did about it uh, it was a good little overview so check this out great little project i really hope that he finishes it and in so much as um i don't know gives us a few more levels and kind of fleshes it out you know i completely yeah. forgot i don't know why we never put that on the dreamcast at the thing i probably we probably should have done that i completely forgot mm. yeah that would have been a good idea that would have been, people would have been I, like I what the hell is this it, you guys <laughs> had the access so yeah, it looks like his Patreon post is still locked. You have to it's subscribe. Still locked. Okay, so maybe so. that hasn't uh, maybe that hasn't clicked over yet. Um, but but yeah, I mean, keep keep an eye out because uh, that's from my understanding, it is supposed to go live and is supposed to be you know a public release after a time after a certain amount of time. Maybe it was mm -hmm. two weeks. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so that's that's awesome. Shouts to Frog Bowl. Keep keep uh keep it up and keep uh surprising us with these crazy new projects yeah, um, neat. editor's corner podcast episode 22 saturn's success with sega lord x and the sega guys this was a real fun one uh we did with mel and james and dan and we really just talked about that narrative uh from a previous cast the narrative that the saturn failed you know it's something mm -hmm. that if you've if you've looked up sega saturn on google at all you've probably come across a video that's like how you know why why sega failed or saturn is the reason that sega failed you know uh you know saturn is the reason sega is not in hardware anymore you know basically yeah. it's a very very heavily western narrative that the saturn failed when indeed we know that saturn did great in portugal it did excellent in japan maybe it didn't win quote unquote win over playstation but it came yeah. in second you know and it was also their most successful console in japan so you can, you can just imagine that if you're a, a Japanese dude our age, you know, maybe you have a podcast. You're probably having heavy nostalgia for your, you know, your teen years or your childhood years where you, where Saturn was everywhere and you, you saw the ads on TV and you played Sega mm -hmm. Saturn. It was a successful console. It's just that, you know, the media and, and YouTube content creators are predominantly Western and they they pander to western audiences and for the most part they regurgitate this story that the saturn failed well we basically just tried to have a positive upbeat podcast where we focus on all the ways that saturn succeeds and the things that are good about it and really try to flip the narrative uh 
and kind of move past that because we're 30 years on almost and I think it's probably time that we just hang that up and it is what it is you know history is what it is and we don't have uh, a time machine history you know? has been written by the victors. but the thing is the Saturn the Saturn exists outside of all that now it's like not on the market it doesn't really matter whether Sega mm-hmm. quote unquote failed or succeeded you pick up a Saturn and some games you're gonna have a blast it's a great console f- taken by its own merits you know that was basically yeah. like the takeaway basically so uh check yeah. it out you guys can check yeah. this out uh and uh it, it was uh posted to patrons early and then folks got access to it like a week later so we'll continue to post those up uh for on our patron uh access uh like a week in advance and then release them to the public um next up is uh ddi rally have you guys have either of you messed around with this at all i've ne- I'm no, not I... really a racer fan so it's uh okay um saturn it's memories more, uh... is a huge fan yeah. of this i've seen him post about oh, it yeah. on his yeah i've seen him post about it on twitter he said it's it's definitely like a solid Sega Rally. Uh, I don't well, I don't know if I would call it a, a clone. Daytona one that he is about Steam Suit that did the Daytona clone. That I don't know. Um, Dan says I played that one. Yeah. So, so this is this was being you know there's an, there's another one of course that's Over Jump Rally you know that's coming and that's runs on like the Unreal Engine. Um, this one is different. Like this is a uh, I would say this is trying less to be realistic you know and more leaning into like the kind of like arcadey look and feel it just yeah, looks a little bit yeah. Game, yeah. And although for those of you listening at home we're talking about a uh, like an indie developed pc game that's in the correct. works called ddi I rally championship Ch- 1995 international rally and yeah right down to from the logo to the cars being used they are trying to basically make a a modern remake of sega rally championship essentially mm-hmm. And yet it still has kind of that like arcadey kind of vibe. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, DDI stands for Dangerous Dirk Interactive. So I guess that's a, a tribute to Sega's rate. Uh, it, it, well, that's the, that's the developer, D- Dangerous Dirk yeah. Interactive. But that's why it's DDI Rally. But essentially, um, Dan did a video and then he also wrote up Another this. Dan. Um, Dan, yeah, not Dan Thrax. Mega Driver Dan. <laughs> Dan Driver, the Mega Driver, uh, did a nice video that you guys can check out and also wrote up this really great article about it. Um, I have mm-hmm. not gotten a chance to try it yet, um, but it definitely does look like fun. You can get it on Steam. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and, it, it, I, you know, not only does he love it, but also Sega, uh, Saturn Memories, who's a big fan of the original Sega Rally, also uh, says that this is definitely worth uh, a download and trying out and uh so yeah we've got like a plethora of options for folks who like sega rally um it's pc only right yeah, so, yeah. i'm looking it's for where steam. it says that. i believe yeah it's on steam so it's pc only at this point uh mm-hmm. there are links to the official page and the steam page and the video um and I don't have like a ton of time to read the entire article, but I recommend folks either check, read the article or check out the video if you have time and you're interested in Sega Rally um, because we have to move right along because we have so many articles yep. to cover. Um, but yeah, it's it's awesome that we get this and Overjump, you know? So there's, there's mm-hmm. different flavors of Sega Rally uh, remakes for folks. Next up is a article that we were supposed to talk about last week, uh, but of yes. course, uh, you know, the show kind of got in the way. But Dan wrote this up, yeah, so I'm going to let you take bit. it away, Dan. Well, I will say this, okay. though, for the record. Lots of folks got hmm. to play this at uh, Game On, because we did have it oh, on. Did they? Yeah, we Thanks. had it yeah. on the Pluto, and actually the the people were like, what is this game? This game is great. <laughs> you know, I was, yeah. yeah, so go That's ahead, cool. take it away. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we have a, an English translation patch available for the uh, 2D fighting game Rabbit now on the Saturn. Um, the uh, patch comes from Derek A. Team Pascarella, who uh, has dipped his toes now into Sega Saturn uh, patch development. He's been a long-time Dreamcast translation patch developer, mm-hmm. and now he's uh, checking out the Saturn. So it's good to see him on our side of the the Sega divide, I guess, uh, if you will. I mean, we like Dreamcast too, obviously, but um, yeah, it's it's cool that he uh, is starting to do some Saturn stuff, and he translated Rabbit here, um, which is a pretty cool uh, 2D fighting game. Very colorful. It's got um, I think it take it's got a very like a, a Chinese. Uh, motif going on to it and mm-hmm. the reason it's named rabbit is because the uh, protagonist 
uh, her like spirit animal, if you will, or or like a beast uh, spirit who goes along with her is a rabbit. Each fighter has a different animal um, that goes along with them, and they can use that animal as like a a special uh, ability, like a, a super move. Super so move. it's um it's pretty neat. Um, super move in there. Yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. He did. Uh, Derek did get some help from uh, Bo Bales. Mm -hmm. uh, on hacking, uh, Walnut translated it. Walnut has worked on some uh, other translation patches in the Sega community as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Malenko helped with finding some of the assets to actually um, change them in, from Japanese and English. And um, team effort. And Knight of Dragon. And yes, and Knight of Dragon helped with uh, identifying the game's compression, which was used in just like a, a few spots. It wasn't even all compressed, but of course, they had just be like a oh, couple things compressed just to make it harder. <laughs> just to uh, throw no. a monkey wrench. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. So, uh, you can download this patch from uh, A Team's GitHub. We do link to, for, uh, to that from uh, my story on a site, um, or you can just go right to his GitHub page. Mm -hmm. I think he uses, yeah, he uses the Sega Center and patch or the SSP uh, format. Um, yeah, the so this uh, fighting one, game, yes, yes. Uh, so this fighting game did come out in uh, June 1997 from a developer that didn't do a whole lot named Aorn. Uh, it was published by Electronic Arts's uh, collaboration in Japan with Victor, yeah. which they they published several games in Japan. Um, and and yeah, it, uh, oh, the patch also does one other thing I should mention. It enables from the start all of the extras in the options menu that usually need to be unlocked by mm -hmm. beating the game multiple times. These options include zoom, animal stock, stock count, and damage. Um, originally, damage, when, when you set it off, made neither player take any damage. It was just like sort of silly. It was like a screenshot mode, I think Bo Bales put it. Um, so... Since that's kind of useless to most people, Derek decided to edit that and make it so that when you turn it to off, only the first player, you know, the, the actual <laughs> human player generally, um, mm -hmm. is going to not take damage. So it's like an invincibility mode. It's like a cheat mode now. Hmm. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, no, I really a like little this game. quality life. We actually Have covered this on... We covered this game on one of the podcasts. Uh, yeah, one of the and, earlier like, podcasts. You know, yeah, it was like a like a fighting game one, but this one was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it, even though I didn't understand understand ja understand yeah. English, understand yeah. the Japanese in there. It it reminds it me. Fun. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of uh, the Far East of Eden fighting game on uh, on the mm -hmm. Neo Geo. Art style is very similar. A lot of the fighting uh, feel, feels very similar to that Far mm -hmm. East of Eden game. Uh, the color palette is very similar too. So it just has that, and and it's yeah, it's weird. Like like you said, very kind of uh, what did you say Chinese. Uh, yeah, in the mythos Chinese, and stuff like, like that. Exactly. All the characters yep. are kind of Chinese themed. All the yeah. environments even the music a little exactly. bit exactly so. yeah so yeah. but it's 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 great like it's a sleeper hit for sure and when we I, put it I did on i play and... this i guess you asked me what i've been playing i did play rabbit a you little played bit rabbit week. okay good yeah yeah so it was, it was cool i liked it uh consensus is folks like it like folks are it's not one that they're familiar with and then we they put it on and they just start playing it and then they're like wait a second what am i playing what is this game this game is great you know so there you go uh P more people should play rabbit especially now that it's translated so shouts to yeah. all those fine folks who who helped yes. make that happen thank you to everyone yep. and i'm glad lee, that lee uh, bronson and lee benson check goes a team the man when and, yeah uh, when i found Con out that a solid game with interesting uh, mechanics yes when, when, when i when i heard that derek was starting to do saturn stuff i was like oh yes <laughs> like now he's gonna get the bug <laughs> for it hopefully now we're continue. cooking yeah, I think he, yeah. he wanted to take a break from the because his his next big project is I don't know if he announced it yet, but it's pretty huge. The one for Dreamcast yeah. he's working on, right? Mm. So I think he wanted to uh, like because he's done that before, especially with uh, between um uh, Nakaru, he'd do a bunch of different little patches here and there. So yeah. I think that's what he's doing so he doesn't get burnt out, which is understandable. I I feel that makes you know? sense. Yeah. So oh, go I check it to, out. Um, Mention real quick earlier in chat, Scotty Mode said something about how this is uh this is the 25th anniversary. It's it's the anniversary of Resident Evil coming out, and he said to uh, mm. play play your Saturn version in uh, in honor of it. Uh, yeah, go play, play the, uh, What was the exclusive mode? I, I can't find him in chat now, but uh, Saturn version. Uh, oh, here it is. Go right. play the battle mode. Battle the mode. Version. That's oh, right. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Nice. Definitely. So, so there you go. That's uh, rabbit. you're pathetic. That is rabbit, and folks should check it out. 
uh definitely play this check version so you can uh yeah check so out the we, we recommend it we do i don't know how much a copy goes for i would love to have one but i don't i don't have that one even uh, though well why don't we check the, i think we looked at it, it was expensive i think right yeah I well i was talking so we can talk about this more when we talk about the uh, there, there's a little nugget that i want to share with you that i was talking about at to adam about adam Corlick. uh but uh, i'll, I'll talk to you when, when we get to our panel so okay. here's a game yeah. X Men versus Street Fighter, Best of Saturn. Uh, you guys pl game. happen to play it? You you played it? I I have, and actually, there's a a photo of my PVM. I think that's that I that I actually put on uh, Google. That if you Google it, it actually has a picture of my mm. JVC with that on it. Let me see if I can. Nice. See, see yeah. So so X Men versus Street Fighter is freaking fantastic, and it, it's one of the best Capcom fighter. I mean, it's not maybe arguably the best. But folks might want to fight me on that. Uh, it's one of the best Capcom fighters I'll on fight the Saturn. You in general, but almost not on that, just because of the I couldn't the opportunity last week. <laughs> I honestly couldn't tell you if it was arcade perfect or not. Utilizing the four megabyte expansion, it looks pretty darn arcade perfect to me. I'm, it's possible that uh, well, I mean loading times aside, because that's what makes yeah. it not. But I mean, you know, the the frames of animation are gorgeous. This game, it runs fast. You've got the tag teaming. You've got. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's a blast to play. And it's in that vein of, uh, what is it? The, it, it, would, would you say that this is the one that games. led to the Marvel v. Capcom? Yeah. 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 It was, it I mean, Street was... Fighter versus, uh, Street Fighter versus, uh. Well, it started with Children of the X Atom, yeah. right? And you, yeah, yeah, you had the Street yeah, Fighter the games had, like, and Children steps. of the Atom. They yeah. took steps. They kept getting closer and they closer. They kept getting closer. You had Street, uh, X-Men versus Street Fighter. Then you had. Uh, you had Marvel superheroes. Marvel superheroes, exactly. Yeah, okay. And then you had Marvel vs. Capcom. Of course, Marvel vs. Capcom two, and the rest is history. But yeah, this is uh, a, a fantastic game. It. They only went to they went to they only went to NBC three. There's no other games after yeah. that. And and you know what? <laughs> it's funny. It sh so Children in the Atom, as good as it was, like this is better for sure. Like it's funny mm -hmm. ch on the on the U.S. long box, Children of the Atom got like all fives from Game what was it, Game Pro magazine or whatever. It got like a perfect <laughs> score, and I was like. It's it's good, but it, it it's still like it has certain flaws. What do you to think it. Like, this does better? Everything. I I think like the oh, okay. yeah no it's it's faster. That there's more mm. frames of animation. It's slicker. It's just it's it's a refinement. Um, fr like Kodo was great. Uh, Children of the Atom was good, but this mm. they just kept refining it and making it better and better until they got to like Street Fighter Zero Three, and that game just like runs so beautiful. Like that, uh, that's probably for me, for my money, like that's probably Capcom's best fighter on the Saturn is zero three. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's a really good fighter. Uh, Pat, what do you think? What's your favorite Capcom fighter on the Saturn? That's a hard one. Uh, probably X-Men or Street Fighter. I really like that really? one a lot. Yeah. 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 That's one of my favorite ones. Uh, oh no, Alpha Three. I forgot Alpha Three is on there too. Uh, yeah. Probably between those two. If I had to pick one, probably Alpha Three. If I had to pick one, but mm -hmm. I like X Men or Street Fighter a lot as well. Mm -hmm. It's probably my third favorite in the uh, Capcom versus series. Mm -hmm. Okay, me and my fourth because I forgot S and K. You stuff forgot like S and K. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I forget a lot about these games. Wait, was but there yeah, a Capcom versus S and K? On uh, uh, not on Saturn. Not on Dreamcast, there's one on, or two, yeah. Right, right, on Dreamcast. Uh, but not oh, on Saturn. Vampire Savior, I forgot about that oh, one, Oh, the Darkstalker series, that's three. right. Yeah, oh, Vampire yeah. Saviors would be mine. Vampire answer. Savior 2 is fantastic. Favorite. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, you know, like, there are actually folks out there that prefer Street Fighter Alpha 2 over 3. Even though 3 looks flashier and operates a little bit quicker, like, th mm -hmm. they like the balance of 2 a little better. And I can understand mm -hmm. that argument. I, I think it's probably... And I mean, maybe, maybe they're just going with that argument because it's the only one we got in the West. We didn't get, uh, you know, we didn't get zero three in the West, but I don't know. I've heard people say that. So that's a take. It might be a hot take, but it's a take anyway. Check out X-Men versus Street Fighter. You pro if you can't afford it, which is, there's a good chance you can't at this point, uh, just, you know, just acquire it. I, I like 50 bucks when I bought it. Is it really? Yeah. When did you buy it, Pat? A decade uh, ago. 2000, 2006. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. That was like 16. way. Sorry, that's way before. My bad. That's way before Japanese folks 16. realized that no, Gaijin what, yeah. want all their games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you buy for you could buy it in the, with a box or eighty on Amazon, ninety bucks. 
Okay. Mm. Okay. Oh, hey, Pudgy you know. Bunny did uh, come in chat and say that um, Rabbit is going for one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. yeah see, game. when I when we covered it on the podcast a long time ago, I want to say it was like fifty dollars, and I was thinking about it, and I should have pulled the trigger back then. But like at that point, I was just collecting U.S. games, so I suck. Mm. <laughs> I really should have jumped on that. Yeah, hey, I didn't either. Uh, I collected Japanese games. Next up, sound improves drastically on Saturn Mr. Core. Dan Thrax, take it yep. away. Okay. Yeah, so we got another uh, battery of <laughs> Mr. Updates here for the Saturn Core over the last month. Uh, Sergey Vodnenko, also known as SRG320, um, has continued his um, just... Uh, is drilling down on all the issues with his Saturn cord that he's been working on over the last uh, few months feverishly since he finally um, kind of got into a safer area of Ukraine. Uh, and a lot of the gains that he's made in the last month have been in audio improvements. Um, also, he's worked on like video RAM accuracy uh, and that sort of thing. Um, but I guess a lot of games are sounding better now, uh, according to the people who are in the official Mr. Uh, Discord server. Mm. Um, so I, yeah, in my story, I have compiled all the stuff that, uh, is new and updated about the core since the last time I wrote about the core, which was back on February 9th and the story went up, uh, March 15th. So yeah, a little over a month. Um, there's, there's a laundry list of things that I will not read on this show for, uh, you know, time's sake, but you can check them out on the website in my story. Um, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, and just to kind of mention a few of the games that are sounding better with the um, the recent updates, uh, I guess Sega Ages Afterburner 2 uh, sounds good, Tetris Plus, Radiant Silver Gun, uh, Shining Force 3 sounds great now. Uh, one user named Mario said, said, Blaze spell doesn't destroy my speakers. Mm. Um, I guess, I guess there was yet. a glitch with it. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, and they said this update, along with the previous one from a few days ago, is a game changer. Mm -hmm. Insane audio improvements all around. So that's great to hear. You know, uh, I, that was like one of the, the biggest weaknesses, I guess, of the Setter Mr. Core um, after a lot of the uh, visual things mm -hmm. uh, started mm -hmm. to get fixed and he added uh, game saves was the audio. The audio was um, having a lot of glitches. Now, there's still a ways to go. There's still a lot of games that have some audio problems. There's still some games with video problems. So, but mm -hmm. I, you know, it's getting closer and closer. So that's cool. Incidentally, I got to play uh, Saturn on Mister for the first time at Game On. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah, and and oh. funny enough, so Pat didn't have this latest version uh, uploaded to the Mister, mm. but it didn't really matter because it was so loud on the floor you couldn't hear anything anyway. Mm. <laughs> so and and he was and, and he was piping it through a, a PVM, which I didn't. I don't think it had sound no. anyway. So so no, anyway, it had sound. It okay, sound. the only but, one that didn't was Dreamcast. Okay, it had sound, but you couldn't hear it, right? Because the, the show floor was so loud. The yeah. point is, I got to play it, and it was great. Like I was just like, I feel like I'm playing Sega Saturn. Uh, we played okay. Twinkle Star Sprites. We played a couple different, couple different Street games on Fighter there. Zero Street Three. Fighter Zero Three. Yeah, it, and uh, felt like playing a Sega Saturn, like stock Sega Saturn. Nice. Uh, good load times. Just had a blast, and. Uh, yeah, so I was very impressed with that. Uh, first first time actually like playing one in, you know, like not just watching a video of it, but actually getting to play with it. So, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. really impressed. Really impressed. Nice. So, c c shouts and kudos to SRG. He's amazing. I'm excited. Honestly, once I get my new setup ready, I'm going to be testing that a little bit more more readily because I'll have it right in front of me to play. So Yeah. I almost wish that it was possible to like I have that uh I have that mod that Bandai model, you know, of the, mm -hmm. the little mini Sega Saturn. And I almost yeah. like wish I could cram the guts of a of a Mister in there. No. But the Mister kind of is is tall, you know? Like it's the whole setup. I'm not sure. I don't know how easy that would be. Um I know some folks have done like a Raspberry Pi in there, but if I was going to do it at all, I'd go Mister and have it be like legit fpga i'd probably you know? wait for the uh for that mars project the uh, mars whenever that comes out yeah i was thinking option. about that that might be the better option you're right so we'll see we need a um, review for shiro so all i'm saying there you go yeah nice tricks. It's almost time for dan to get a mister no i'm okay i <laughs> am totally fine with just using my actual saturn Hooked up yeah. in my living room. Well, I'm saying no, but if, I, they, if Dan needs a Mister hookup, we can hook him up. I mean, oh, it okay. is great. It is great that these options exist for folks. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's just another great way 
I mean, it is a form of hardware preservation, really, when, when it comes to the yeah. cores, you know, being preserved. Um, and uh, as much as a real hardware nerd as I am, I really appreciate that project. So, folks, uh, if you're into Mr., definitely get yourself the Saturn core. Um, nice. Next up, another Danthrax article. And a great one at oh, that. You know what? You, you, you saying get yourself the Saturn core made me, made me remember. Um, if you get, if you just like download the Saturn core off of the, the main branch or whatever yeah. for your mister, it's going to be still the update from like last fall. Um, really? None yeah. of these, yeah, none of these updates are getting added to the main branch. Oh, right they're now. not they're commits all, yet. They're considered beta. Oh, yeah, they're gotcha. Not official commits. Like so nightly's almost. On. Stable core. They're like nightly's yes, base. You, okay. Like nightlies, yeah. So you have to go onto the uh, official Mr. Discord server and go into the Unstable Nightlies channel and download the uh, the files and and uh, you know manually put them on your Mr. So, but the, yeah. but but you would be helping then in the debugging process, right? Because then yeah, you could because report... then you can you can report bugs on the the GitHub, yeah. On and eventually, GitHub. eventually, all this stuff will be added to the you know to a big yeah. release, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm sure. Hey Frog Bowl, how's it going? We already talked about hey. your game. <laughs> we missed you. Here. But but thanks for joining First us for sure. About. Yeah, it was. Highlighted your demo earlier. It was great. Um, we're gonna highlight some more stuff from the community here mm. in the 29th anniversary Sega Saturn game competition, which was finalized, and Dan wrote all about it, uh, the winners. So go ahead, take it away, Dan. Okay. Um, yeah, so last Saturday, which was on March 16th now. Uh, Emerald Nova, who uh, organizes the Sega Extreme Saturn game competitions now every year, he mm -hmm. announced live on his Twitch stream uh, the winners uh, for this year's, the 29th anniversary game competition. And uh, the big winners in the three categories that the competition has were uh, Homebrew Survival Horror Game Cold Case, uh, English Localization of Stellar Assault Double S, and a tool for muxing Cinepack video. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, those are the three things. Um, real briefly, uh, Cold Case won the best original game. It's a survival horror experience styled, uh, stylized similar to Silent Hill. It features a man exploring 3D environments from a third-person perspective who is searching for evidence in creepy locales like his dingy apartment, an abandoned town, and a rundown church. Yeah. He has to defend to... himself with... Go ahead. What's that, Pat? I would say I'm happy that one won. That one's one of my favorite uh, entries. You liked I it. think I voted that one as yeah. my favorite. Yeah, because both of you were judges for this. So. Same. Yeah, I voted. Mm -hmm. I, 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 everything was kind of weighted based on whether it was uh, the second or third time it had been entered, you know? But Cold yeah. Case was completely original this time. And uh, and for what it did and everything like that, you know, obviously it, it looks like there's a lot more that he wants to maybe do with it. Um, but I mean... It it was a pretty complete demo, right, Pat? Like, um, yeah, it was like uh, there was even more. Like when I did, did it for the competition, played it. There's yeah. more levels to it, so that was pretty intense. And impressive. just uh, and just from a like a just from a presentation standpoint, and what it was doing, what it was getting the player to do, the whole like upside down kind of thing, you know, very yeah. reminiscent of uh, of Stranger Things or whatever. And you, uh, it was great. Like just. Uh, just from a concept, a game concept mm -hmm. level, I think it was really great. So yeah, I kind of weighted it pretty heavily, and it won. And cold cases, and cold cases made by Jay Beretta. Jay by Beretta, the way, who had entered a homebrew two D platformer into twenty twenty one's competition called Zygo. You may remember Zy he had right. started converting that into a three D platformer uh, last year, mm -hmm. early twenty twenty three. Um, so it was kind of a surprise that he kind of pivoted from that to surprising with the cold case. So right. Yeah. Pretty cool. Congrats to him. Definitely. Yes, master congrats. Then we had hacks, so, patches, and translations. Yes, in that category, the English localization patch for Cellar Salt Double S one, which I did uh, work on. Mm -hmm. um, it was Dance led. To, I was part of a team led by Lacquerware. Um, uh, Shadow Mask was on there too, and Cargo Dan and Silos. Uh, mm -hmm. And all of our volunteer voice actors. So, you know, just take a second to say thank you to everybody for helping out on this because it turned out awesome. 
and uh, and thank you for all the judges for uh we for need to get like a trophy for dan like, he, like i'd like this. to thank my uh my dog yeah. <laughs> like, thank you yeah, i'm gonna thank be like you. this in the background yeah. like five minutes wrap it one right one we minute gotta, wrap it up we gotta go no but, we, uh, need to, but uh, we need to have room for kojima and his uh gang yes. to speak for 12 hours i mean minutes, ser yeah. seriously it came as no surprise it was a huge undertaking massive project many people involved it, and it the final took, product uh, more than a year yeah the final product shows you know um the proof is in the pudding as they say and this was a very slick production um, i think we all can agree that it was about as professional as it gets and and so i'm not really surprised Thanks. and kudos dan to your the entire team everyone who was involved did an amazing job on that and uh and it was a tough year of judging as well because mm -hmm. there were he several heavy hitters in this yeah, competition a lot yeah but i mean it was stellar salt was so good it was and it was such a, an awesome experience getting to play it in english from beginning to end and i still haven't gotten like the best ending so i need to go back and do that but uh but yeah, yeah. kudos to all you guys uh did we Thanks. want to read like the other who else like came in well, at what let, let me let me mention who won the best okay. utility first go for it go for it uh the sega saturn film muxer by trekkies unite uh won uh the best <laughs> utility it's a video editing tool for processing full motion video for the sega saturn formatted in cinepack a video container commonly found in the console's games. Mm. Um, so this, uh, the competition entry is an update of the initial release in 2022 that adds direct insertion of PCM or ADX compressed audio streams, along with other features. So um, yeah, and uh, Trekkie's made this to make it easier for people to put out patches. Um, uh and it already paid dividends because we use it on seller salt because <laughs> we had yeah. to do a lot of all those mission briefings at the beginning of each mission is is an fmb so yeah we used his tool to um put our dubbed english audio and our redone music and sound effects uh, ripped out of the sound test of the game mm -hmm. uh back in there so yeah thank you to trekkies and congratulations mm -hmm. Yeah, that so, was a tough yeah. one too because you had stuff like Knight's Chronos Netlink demo and the 240p suite, which were also big heavy hitter tools, you know, that, that folks yeah. can use. But yeah, the Film Muxer is definitely a developer's dream when it comes to like vid working with video, you know. A helpful thing, yeah. Yeah. I would say not, I would say no as far as reading off every entry. Okay. Um, but people can check my story on the website just for time's sake because we still got a lot to get through in the show. But, Absolutely. Um, everybody can check out my story on the website. I have them all listed here. You can also check out Sega Extreme. There's a thread in the Saturn Deb uh, That's uh, right. uh, board uh, subforum um, where you can check out all of that. And you can also go to Emerald Nova's website, um, which I linked to. It's uh, what emeraldnova.com simple yeah um or you know check out the uh, video on demand uh on his youtube channel and check and out panda's video also, too yeah and pandemonium also did a cool video <laughs> uh it, which it isn't talking about who won but it is right. showing off all of the entries on panda's youtube channel um he also goes over some of the end some of the uh homebrew efforts and translation patches that came out that weren't entered into this contest quite a right. few weren't quite a um, few for whatever yeah. reason so yeah that's cool that he he kind of touched on them as well so mm -hmm. yeah check all that out congratulations yeah. to everybody who Definitely. won thank you to everybody for uh you know entering stuff into this contest it's yes, pushing the saturn yeah. forward and everybody gets you know a lot of new cool stuff to have fun with with the same yeah. so it's awesome uh, you know and folks are folks in the chat like moose tracks are saying you know trekkie's made a one-click tool for converting videos uh damn near perfect for saturn and another thing you know he did was he released that uh that cinepec demo that, and uh i have to say like kudos to trekkies for spending years researching mm -hmm. video compression on saturn to that that right there was the culmination of like years of work mm -hmm. that he has done um so you know and i geek out over that kind of thing so you know definitely uh but kudos to everybody who who won and and who entered a project to begin with because uh it, it made it a really great great uh, competition i'm looking forward to the 30th anniversary next year yeah the, so the end of this year do. really exactly i know right yeah it's gonna be here before we know it right um yeah, next up, uh, so uh, Pat and I were guests on uh, the Dreamcast Junkyard podcast. That was yep, fun. A long time coming. A long yeah, time coming. Long... I know we've been talking about it for several years. 
Hmm. And what, like, I'm not sure if, I guess they, they brought us on to talk about Saturn. I think we ended up talking more about Dreamcast, which is fine too, because we love Dreamcast too. Yeah. We're not just Saturn snobs. Uh, we, I know Pat actually, I think is Dreamcast is his favorite console. Yeah, it's very Dreamca close. I, I prefer Dreamcast over Saturn, but I still like Saturn. Yeah, it's close. Like, but Pat wants to be buried with his Dreamcast. And I think, yeah, you know, I think like that, I'm uh, extreme with it. The takeaway, on that. the takeaway with this one, I think, was just talking about the, you know, I don't know, the the legacy of Sega and kind of like, uh, yeah. I don't know, their personality as a as a game company and stuff like that. It's it was a fun conversation. Folks should definitely uh, check it out. Um, yeah, it was, was hard being fun. it was hard being put on the spot about like my favorite Dreamcast games because I'm like. Oh my God, there, there's so many good Dreamcast games. Uh, that's like really tough, but yeah, it was it was fun. Yeah, I'll always be repping Super Magnetic Neo though, and uh, of course Toy Commander and um, Soccer Wars Three, mm -hmm. hands down. Yeah, so there's another. There's a lot of uh, Dreamcast and Saturn fans are eating good now because there's like between what is it the you had the editor's corner with Sega Lord X and the Sega guys. You have this one with uh, the Dreamcast Junkyard, and there's even more. There's panels. There's other podcasts. There's a ton of stuff for folks to listen to right now if you're if you're into like Saturn and Dreamcast content. Next, I'm gonna blow past this one, the the Shiro panel at Game we'll On because we're just gonna talk the, about it yeah. when we get to the expo, which is next. So here, there we go. look who's in that. Look who's in the uh, the thumbnail here. We got Sasquatch in the thumbnail right there. Yeah, I, I, I made the waifu in the, in the and we got yeah the waifu. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, Game out. On Expo was a, a blast. Do you want to start, Pat? Yeah. So this was a interesting info int convention. So I do this every year. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it every year since 2015. So two years before I started, we started Shiro together. This is John Lester Gamester 81's uh, yeah. convention, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is uh this is a uh, Game Straight Ones convention in Arizona, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. I've been going to it for several years now, and uh, I've helped out with it uh, for the last uh, for the last like uh, was it the since sixteen or seventeen I think. Mm -hmm. I brought my my PVMs to the convention, all my mm -hmm. TVs, showing all the pe all the people, all the cool TVs, and you know just enjoying the event. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy going to it and doing the convention and this convention and like, is in phoenix arizona and it happened yep. last weekend yeah, right. exactly and it happened yeah. last weekend uh, uh i invited dave down to come talk with me and he or come down and he's like yeah i'll come down next year so like he <laughs> flew out and uh yeah we uh we just had a good time so friday right. i think uh do you want to go by day by day dave yeah we can do that okay well uh, i guess on the before they showed up i actually picked up one game I actually only picked up two things. This is one of two. Well, technically three. I got the Tokimeki Memorial. Uh, this I was at the Drama Series Volume Three. It's nice. like this giant collector edition with a with like a graduation thing in the back of it in the game. I actually don't know what's in there. I, it's sealed right now. Uh, part of me wants to open it up, but I don't know if I should open up the, the scroll. Or not. Yeah, you got like that that uh, that scroll in there. That's yeah. a pretty primo package right there. Yeah, I could open up. Should I let the audience decide the fate? You got to get it WADA graded. No, I'm just kidding. Can we do a poll? <laughs> yeah, a oh, like if we do a poll, everybody's probably going to say open it. Yeah. So I mean, you know, that's that's value. up to you. That's up to you. I don't I don't know. The like, value. But that's up but to no. you. Yeah, look, Pat already got pressured into one thing related to this convention. We don't need to pressure him into another thing. So. Like I, like I... I, I have a copy. I have a sealed copy of Nino Kuni on the DS, which has like the big book and everything. And I haven't opened it because yeah. I already played the game and I love the game. Like that's why I bought, that's why I bought a sealed copy of it with the book. But I probably should open it at one point. Every analog black sheep's open it, open yeah, it halfway. Gonna... Lawrence says open it yeah. halfway. <laughs> yeah, just just it closed. <laughs> keep it mint. I've seen that... a lot of keep it closed. Yeah, just light some candles and get in the bath and then open. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You don't want to get it wet. I did have um, another game, but yeah. You got this uh, other game though. You snatched another yeah. game that was pretty. I snatched up another one right there. Snatcher. The Holy Grail. The Holy Grail. So this was funny. Nice. Dave. Uh, Dave came in pretty much, and we uh, set up. We we're at the worst booth, or the worst position of the booth known to man. Yeah. Yeah. Weren't you right by so, the uh, tournament stage or something? Yeah, that's where the first photo, the worst thing. So the speakers blasting our ears, people wrestling in the background, concerts going up. It was a, 
it was insanely not good. So, hmm. and Adam was incredibly unhappy about that. So we got that moved. But before that, we said to walk around, and uh, Dave saw this in the case. Like this was like this wasn't planned. This wasn't a oh hey, there's a snatcher. Let's like go over there. That's like oh, I was looking at booths like. Like different yeah. booths around the show. We were just trying to do a, a typical like walk convention walkthrough video, you know, and document. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, Snatcher. Oh, they want a thousand dollars for it. I just remember that was a number that Dan, that that Pat threw out as kind of like his limit. Like, he, he, I, I, we were on a cast a while back, a, a Shiro show a while back, and I, and we and I think Dan and I asked Pat like, how much would you pay for this? And he was like a thousand bucks. So when I saw that sticker, I was like, well. That's your you that's go. your game and that's your price that you're willing to pay. But then yeah. I threw out like the, I I just like pulled eight hundred dollars out of my ass and the guy was like, hmm. <laughs> and that was that was Friday. I was surprised he negotiated with you on a Friday. Like it wasn't like Sunday. You know they're about to close down and doing discounts. Last chance. Yeah. yeah like you know that's when I got my games. But Pat just got this yeah. like right out the gate. It was um, a plan with the snatch shirt. It actually wasn't. It's kind of funny. I just wore it because I, I pretty much have a layout of shirts for all the days. So I did Snatcher and Friday, the two Shiro shirts for the rest of the day. So it was, it was just kind of funny timing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I uh, picked I think the up. T-shirt got you that, that game and that yeah. discount. Well, they the didn't even notice. That, like, after <laughs> we worked out the deal, then the guy, like, noticed his T-shirt. And he's like, oh, oh okay, really? that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's well, like, you mind. must really like this game. Yeah. yeah, I do. It's one of my favorite games. It's funny. I picked up two Konami things at the convention, so that's true. Yeah. You really, did. really funny. So, but yeah, I'm that's really a happy to have that's it. a grail for Look sure. Connecty. And I'm really happy that that Pat was able to pick that up. Same. I I think cool. we ended up on eight fifty eight twenty five. Eight twenty five. So. Yeah, eight twenty five. So, and yeah, there was now there I was a dude. It's not sure. Well, there was a dude real. on. Uh, there was a dude at another oh, booth who had a copy, and he it, he also was asking like a thousand, and I asked him to work. You know, I would just wanted to see what he would do on the price, and he was like nine fifty, not a penny less. You know, I was like, no. okay, so Pat got a good deal then. You know, because yeah, yeah, like the, yeah, the, and it's not the it's not like the, the the pristine collector's edition. There's a little thing on the 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 manual right there, a little white spot, little little terrace mm. thing right there, and the disc mm. is not like is not like like pristine. It's like one, scuff but, wear or something like that. You know. Yeah, but I'm just happy that I got it. Like I said, I'm it's good yeah. enough for me. It's Snatcher, so I have. Finally, have a copy of Snatcher. So very yeah, happy. All, the love is complete. All of the thing goes in with the foam. Yeah, the foam is oh, worth yeah. something. Yeah, definitely. Foam exactly. Is, it's a yeah, it's, no. it's, yeah, it's the old foam. It's like the really old stale mm-hmm. foam. <laughs> no, no, but it's great. I'm gl- I'm really glad that he got that. And yeah, then the only other it, game that I kind of want to need that's that, that I like that's high 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 value is a uh, is Kyo Flying Squadron, but that's uh, oh yeah I think I think the last time I checked in like the 2010s it was like about 1500, so I don't even want to guess how much I'm gonna be paying for Kyo Flying Squadron on the Sega CD now. Let's <laughs> if I had a, to pick a, a Sega CD game that I would want and I've wanted it for the longest time uh is lunar 2 because i have lunar 1 oh, yeah. on on the sega cd um uh, first jrpg i ever played actually um and it's great and it's like i remember like back in the day like 20 years ago i was like i wonder how much lunar 2 is and i saw it was you know it was probably 200 bucks or something i'm like oh that's way too much that's crazy i'll wait until i can find it for, for less it's yeah. like it's only got up from there so i what would definitely want snatcher would grail, I, guess. I would definitely want snatcher but Popful mail would also be great, but I mean, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and Captain Hot and good taste. Um, no, but I mean, snatch. So I, I'm just living vicariously here because there ain't no way I'm. My wife will let me spend eight hundred and twenty-five dollars. Yeah, <laughs> I would get stabbed when I came home. She's like, "What? No, but what I mean, is this that thing on the credit card that's eight hundred dollars, Dave. Yeah. It's okay. I will continue to play the hell out of Snatcher every year, like uh, uh, ceremonially. But uh, I'll you just you know pour one out for for it. Pat. That's that's what I will do. I'll come over to Pat's house and pet the snatcher. <laughs> pet the snatcher. <laughs> Everyone's allowed to take oh photos boy. with it. Five bucks oh a, boy. A, a copy. Yeah, yeah no, you so, got to charge five bucks. You got to charge more than five bucks. You got to recoup those costs, buddy. That was fun. <laughs> Twenty um, bucks a pop. The floor itself was just huge. It was massive. I want to. I want to say that. Uh, yeah, maybe it was bigger than Portland Retro, like by a hair. They're both huge yeah. vendor floors. They're they're both huge vendor floors, but. The, uh, this one was huge, like really. Oh, we need something crazy though. That's not even the full the the hall's full capacity. That was only like 
a, a, a small portion of it. Like true, true. That thing could extend outwards. So like that hall wasn't even close to being even close to being the biggest like the closest it could be so yeah. that hall is going to get much bigger john said it himself it's like yeah we're expanding again next year so that hall is going to be pushed backwards it's yeah. going to be a huge convention like honestly it was a huge success too there's so many people there like it was yeah. insane oh the line was around the build wrapped around the building uh vibe was really good it really it like had a really good vibe honestly i think if uh, if i had anything negative to say it would just be uh coordination and communication like that uh just they, they have a, they have a few you know bolts to tighten up in terms of that you don't you don't have like real programs for the panels instead you have to like download a pdf on your phone so it's like that it's harder to communicate like what times things are you know for things and so that that's the only thing where i feel like prge the, the, their years of experience has probably helped in in terms of like Any, ironing. like flyers uh, or, or program yeah, so I, I don't have anything, any any feelies, like any physical stuff that I got from, from it. Uh, yeah, that's kind of whereas... common. Like, they didn't do it for uh, for the Phoenix Comic Con either. They didn't do that either right. this year. Yeah, yeah, they're more and more going paperless, but that is one thing that I really appreciate about PRGE is that they do print the physical program because I've kept all my programs so far. Yeah, Gen Con in Indianapolis pu um, prints out, at least they did. It's been several years since I've been there, yeah. but when I used to go to Gen Con, they mm -hmm. printed off just a gigantic book yeah. full of all right. the events happening. And you could download the PDF on your phone too or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it was just it was nice having the book to refer to, you know, it is it is uh, at the very least like you're back at your hotel one night and you're just like paging through hmm, what do I want to do tomorrow? You know, right. So it's, it's not a deal breaker. And it's like a, a yeah. very positive, uh, very positive takeaways from this con. I'm, I'm looking forward to maybe doing it again next year with Pat. But cool. uh, but yeah, definitely. Was the sushi good? Oh, the, the sushi was great. We went to a teppanyaki place, right, Pat? Yeah, it's called the uh, it's called Osaka's Osaka Steakhouse. Uh, Osaka Steakhouse, yeah. We went to the one in, in Gilbert actually. We like, just sat at the bar. We cares. just sat at the bar because they they told us it was like that an works. hour wait, and I was like, yeah, let's just sit at the bar. So we just ate sushi and had miso soup and stuff. It was really good. Had it some was, good. had some asakis. Like, I, I really it. Yeah, it was really fun. Dave ate my ate my uh, Phoenix rolls, but that's good. I, I only eat a little no, bit. No, no, I did. Okay, yeah, yeah. Th there's a thing. There's this thing where like I was eating Pat's food because like when we got breakfast at McDonald's, I accidentally ate Pat's uh, McMuffin or whatever. That, oh, sound, McMuffin that sounds really deep. bad. But Dang. anyway, no, yeah. So like I just was pulling stuff from the bag and it was just like didn't know that doing? it was. Yeah. He didn't think because he ordered two McRiddles and it's like. It's like he's wondering, huh? Why is this not as sweet as I? Why does this it to not be? taste like a McGriddle? And Matt's like, because you're eating my McMuffin. <laughs> oh no! I was like, so Pat had a McMuffin while I drive. It's like, uh, yeah. I got bad news for you, Pat. It's like, well, good thing I like I like McGriddles. So yeah, and I then just we got to cut down the calories. I mean, I know McDonald's, but yeah. it's like uh, the McGriddle is significantly more sugary and like calorie intake. So I just wanted mm. to be classic I just dad. A regular move, one. Yeah. On Saturday night, we we got White Castle because I've never had White Castle before. Oh, nice. Never and and Adam, Adam, so Adam was they like, get, Adam was just like, get ready to like sit on the toilet for a day, you know? Yeah, Dave uh, destroyed my toilet. I did not. Did he really? it, it wasn't. No, it my wasn't at all. Was like it, it was not. It was not it at all. It depends on how many burgers you eat. I like had like six of those things that they were really good. Okay. That's not that <laughs> yeah. bad. They are no, good, aren't yeah. they? They're they like so healthy, good. but they're so tasty. Yeah, a White Love Castle white equals garbage. <laughs> David Zane yeah, says. Yeah, but it's tasty garbage. Oh, I, can't, like, I, can't, I can't. I can't even mute you know. David Zane either because he's a mod. That sucks. That's why I was uh, saying like to Pat. David I was Zane, like, you yourself for thirty seconds. I was. I was saying to Pat. I was like, well, Adam says the. It's, we're gonna destroy our toilets if if we eat White Castle and he, like, he, yeah, no. he really and Pat was just once once uh, Adam had to go back to his hotel and he wasn't going with us. Pat's like, well, White Castle it is. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, I didn't say it wasn't garbage, yeah. but it's tasty garbage. Yeah, like I, like I said, uh, I was like, yeah, I agree with Adam, but yeah. I'm still gonna go. Like the thing is, like, yeah, he's right. But I'm still gonna eat it because I like White Castle. So it's like, why yeah. would I like like the thing is that yeah, I know all these things. Take I know the it's, L. it's bad for you. Take I know I'm 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 duct taping myself to the toilet. Do I care? <laughs> Do I no. care? No. It's White Castle. I wanted my I wanted my burgers. I wanted my fries. I wanted my I couldn't get my nineteen eight my eight, nineteen eighteen or whatever. Okay. They didn't have that, for, they didn't have that yet. So that was we got to move it along. We got to move it along, Pat. Yes. Okay. So we did. Uh, yeah. So on Friday we did a panel with Adam. We we were guests on Adam's panel, and I think 
because it was yeah, so you couldn't loud. Do the show live. We yeah. couldn't do the show live because they had us right next to the tournament stage. And God, yeah. those guys were so loud. They had they were blasting in our ears. We we tried. We we did like a mock setup for the show. You could not, mm. and we listened to it back. And you could not hear us at all. You couldn't hear us talking. Oh. Wouldn't have been able to hear. Yeah. So it was crazy. So. He's like, I got an idea. Why don't you guys just come on my panel and we'll we'll stream it live. You know, we'll try that. And so that seemed like a, a, a that seemed like a cool idea. So we did that. We talked about the dental unit, the Atari dental unit. We talked about the Pluto. We talked about oh, uh, Adam shared an interesting anecdote with me that I thought was really interesting. So I'll try to make it quick. So Japanese culture, I, I don't know if, if folks know this, but like for, for years and years, I've known that the, the principle that, you know, there's just only so much space in Japan, right? And that it doesn't right. make a it's whole lot of, they, they just can't hoard all of their stuff, right? So it either ends up at like hard off or they export it, right? To Gaijin, right? Be, and that's an easy mm -hmm. way that they can get it out of their country and save space, right? Because mm -hmm. e-waste takes up a lot of space. What I didn't realize is that they pay for every pound of garbage they throw away. You don't have trash cans out in public. Oh. If you have, if you buy a Starbucks or something, you're taking that thing on the subway with you back to your house. And then when you ultimately do throw it away, you're paying to throw it away. Oh, so, I didn't know that. Yeah. Jeez. So Adam, so we all pay for waste disposal. <laughs> all of us do. Yeah. It's either it, it, either it's I'm in your water. It's yeah, it's a, yeah, and it's it's a nominal fee. It's kind of like subsidized by the city or the county or whatever. Um, but mm -hmm. you, you pay for it, but it kind of they just slide it into your water bill and you never really right. see it. Well, in Japan, you get taxed heavily on throwing out garbage, any garbage, and you get charged by the pound. So it's cheaper if you have an old if you have a stack of old Saturn games, it's actually cheaper to sell them for a penny. Uh, and that's why you would have like uh -oh. you would have all these uh, lots of of old electronics and games and stuff like that yeah. going for such cheap prices because it's still cheaper for them to sell it for like a penny than to actually throw it out. They're going to pay more wow, to throw wild. it out. Yeah. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, after the pandemic, uh, a lot of Japanese uh, sellers, merchants on um, on you know Yahoo auctions, everything have kind of caught on to the fact that Gaijin <laughs> are. Uh, buying a lot of their stuff and that they can sell mm -hmm. that they can charge more for it you know they're like oh they want this stuff so you know adam was saying just anecdotally he's he personally has noticed that uh prices on japanese games and hardware have gone up quite a bit uh mm -hmm. over the over the past yeah because they can and because they're they've found out they finally caught on to the, that fact i mean they were selling them cheap for forever but that's not mm -hmm. necessarily the case anymore and i've definitely noticed myself that uh Prices on Saturn, even Japanese Saturn games, have kind of skyrocketed from what they were just a, ten years ago. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, I mean, even now, like I've been trying to keep uh, keep track of the Netlink stuff. Yeah. On uh, Yahoo auctions, and it's they're going pretty high. Like I'm not seeing any yeah. good Netlink deals recently. Like the no. last one I saw was that two big boxes. Like all I'm glad you're like, still oh. watching that. I'm, I'm glad you're still watching yeah. for that though, because we need to buy some more next time they come up. But I, I mean, yeah, like it's, a, get, it's on my uh, watch list. Get your deals now. Get 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 your Saturn, your Japanese Saturn games now, because all I can say is the same thing that happened to the Western market is probably going to happen on the Japanese side. You know, maybe not to the same degree, mm -hmm. but it's happening and. And Japanese sellers are definitely becoming more savvy to that, you know, because mm -hmm. um, I mean, they were going to sell it anyway. They were they were already going to sell it. But now they're just not letting it go for for so little because they realize that there are buyers that are interested. Yeah. Um, they've also yeah. noticed that a lot of people are coming into their country and buying stuff there physically and then taking it back to the, the U.S. to sell it, you know, or, you know, for, you know, scalper prices on eBay and stuff. So anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, good panel though. Check it out. Any, anything you wanted to add to that, Pat? Or we um, can yeah, move on? there's a weird coincidence. I'll be real quick. So on Saturday or Sunday, I forgot what day it was. Uh, somebody gave me a Mr. Case cause they're like, Hey, your Mr. is like naked. It's like, yeah, it can't be. Oh, nice. A case. And I'm like, here you go. So they got me this Mr. Case. Uh, it's missing nice. a couple pieces. I need to go like figure out what I need and get parts for it. But he gave me that and like the USB hub. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to the guy. And it was interesting. We we're talking. About, oh yeah, I watch the show, love it, and stuff like that. And oh yeah, it's it's like it's like oh, what do you do? It's like oh yeah, I'm a teacher. I went to Japan. It's like oh, that's really cool. It's like uh, are you still teach? Like yeah, I work at the, this thing at uh, Tempe or a place like in the middle of the the state. It's like oh, that'd been really funny if uh, we actually have somebody that uh, actually like 
like went did stuff by my school in the Discord. It's like, oh, that's kind of funny. It's like we just go to school at oh uh, X amount of high school, and it's like, oh yeah, my brother went there. What's your brother's name? And he names a guy I'm, I was friends with for twenty years. Oh my like, gosh, that dude. Yeah, that and dude. It was Pat's like. It was also Pat's like head twin because from behind he looks exactly like Pat. Oh, is this, this is the guy. Yeah. Okay, I remember he was the, the guy that was that's like funny. bald with a beard, and I almost said hi yeah. to him. I almost like pat him on the back and like, hey, Pat. But then I realized Pat was sitting across from him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was so funny. That's funny. That guy but was yeah. that guy was hilarious. He was he was a fun guy. Yeah, he's a really nice dude. Uh, he's friends with my friends with my fr- he's my bro- uh, sorry he's br- the brother of my friend. So it's the kinda, brother of your friend. Kind of funny. We we literally were chatting for like in like almost forty minutes, just like chatting Hello. by the TVs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. picking up the room and stuff, and I was like, "Oh, it's good catching up." Uh, his name's Connor. He's in the Discord. I, I think he's watching the show. If he is, definitely let us know. I didn't get his Discord name, so uh, if mm. you're watching the show or in the Discord, Connor, just at me so I know what your name is. But yeah, he right. got me this cool Mr. Case. I just wanted to thank him and end this stuff. Thank you very much, my dude. I really appreciate that. This is like one of the first things like a like a fan came up and like gave me in person. So much, much thank <laughs> you, and thank you for stopping by the booth. Mm-hmm. Thank you, GoPro. Next time. Uh, uh, speaking of the, the booth, one. speaking of the booth, we got moved. Uh, we we, we, we no, kind of moved ourselves. Yeah, like we took we, yeah, like we, to took, uh, we took initiative and we moved over yeah. to, diagonally to the opposite end of the vendor floor, over by John Hancock. And what a great decision that was, because not only was it not loud, but we could actually like talk to people and and talk to those guys. And we 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 ended up well, we ended up talking to a lot more people because people would actually stop at our booth and and want to talk they didn't want to talk when we were right. over at the loud place because they just didn't well, even bother they did, but the right. thing that says like how do we sign up for how do we sign up for mario kart brother uh, i don't know Three five seconds <laughs> yeah um i i'm not gonna play this but i did like uh, a little vi- short video ch- uh, clip of uh daytona usa on the pluto that was fun uh, yeah, talked, like you're to, fun. talked to uh, mr boom shakalaka from downtown uh, tim kitts so that was fun. Nice. I got to talk to him a little bit. He said, "Oh, he's like, by the way, tell uh, tell Nick to hit me up for an interview or whatever." So there you go. That's a open invitation uh, if if Nick's interested. Um, yeah, no, while it was I... really cool. He he came on talk. He was like, he was like, yeah, I had no idea. They just said that I'm gonna be in like because I talked to him afterwards about the sound. I was like, hey, how's it, how's it feel to be in the game? Like, yeah, it's really cool. They never say anything. I recorded the lines and stuff. and never came out in the arcade, and I thought they just never did anything with it. Like it's amazing, like how twenty years later the the code is actually uh, released, and like I'm surprised none of the game sets are picked up on that. Like, yeah, it's it's weird, but I'm happy that you're in the game though. So that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Shook his hand, thanked him. He's a really nice dude. I love Tim Kitzrow. I just can't believe some of these Saturn prices. Like I was on the I was on the floor, and some some sellers were a little bit more reasonable than others. But man, there was one uh, one dude. I will remain nameless, but uh, yeah, we're not I'll, out to dox people. We're not out to dox people or have people harass people. But all I can say is like these yeah. these were so not real. Steve, these I'm were not joking. real price. Even 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 as gone as the Saturn market is, these prices were a good like. 20 percent over what they should be it was ridiculous like a hundred bucks for for bug two and i was just like you guys that's crazy kidding. that Good is crazy deals. like i know bug two what didn't get as many prints as bug one you know but that doesn't mean it's a hundred dollar game you know like it, it it was just and i i don't know that that tweet blew up because i guess other people are kind of passionate about that too well, other people maximilian dude did retweet it that helped that helped but oh, i think yeah. i mean like you could tell that folks thought they agreed. It was ridiculous, right? You know, like mm-hmm. uh, there's there's like you know, Saturn prices being gone, and then there's just like wow, this we know this is bad because it's like if people on that floor pay those prices, then all that does is proliferate the cycle, and then all well, of a I sudden, mean, are they even paying it? That's what I wonder. Like, well, with these I mean, inflated prices, are they even moving any stock? That I don't know. I mean, I ended up getting a long box. I'll talk about it, but I didn't pay like that. I yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Pat and I had a panel on Saturday evening, um, six p.m. And that actually. Oh, I was you know, to say something real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Before, so basically, there's another per- person that uh, I think I tweeted about that that was selling a Pokemon collector's card box for seven hundred dollars. Oh yes. And like yeah. me and my brother were walking around, we looked at, we just looked at each other like. We own this one. Like I have the same case. I put pictures of it in my thing, and it's like I have that case, and it's like he wanted seven hundred for it, and I'm like, it's like why is yeah. it? Oh, it's like the stickers are rare, and like I looked it up, and I think he messed up the price because I sold it for like sell for seventy dollars. So I right. don't know what that dude was smoking. So uh, yeah, probably, it is zero. 
a lot of, lot of drugs. This joking, probably not. He, he probably messed up the price, but I was surprised still, at how much Pokemon stuff there was on the floor. There was a lot of, uh, and I mean that's a good thing, you know, because I'm, I'm my son's into Pokemon. I'm into Pokemon, so but I was really surprised at like how much there was. Um, Pokemon, but I'm glad you got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So Here's Pat. Panel. Pat and I did the panel. Uh, this this Pat set it up. It was uh, saddens our future, and we were really, uh, I guess, making a pitch. Basically, it was the elevator pitch of like why why folks should get into Saturn. Um, I kind of advocated piracy right off the bat, which is kind of funny we're when I watch it. Back. Piracy, that's go all, to. it's true. We always are, but I, I was just like, yeah. I mean, like, I, it it just always makes me shake my head a little bit when folks like walk by our booth and they're ju they just like shake their head and they're like, Saturn, too expensive for me. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, tr true that it's too expensive for you maybe to collect for it. Yeah, you know, it's like Neo Geo, but like I play Neo Geo and I'm not collecting an AES library, right? I mean, uh, folks should not like, folks should not do that to themselves. They shouldn't like prevent themselves or prohibit themselves from uh, enjoying a console just because they can't collect for the console. You know what and I mean? Legal disclaimer: We at Shiro Media Group LLC do not actually fully endorse support, piracy. Fully support, fully support pirates. I'm sure. I don't no. even think we have a limited liability to protect us. No, we're just no. getting direct sued. But, we but, at Shiro Media Group, not LLC, do not yeah. endorse piracy. They, direct we, sue go straight to the <clears throat> trafficking. I will. I will, for, I will for the record say that if there's a, if there's ever any opportunity for you to support Sega with your dollars, you should. And I love those city connection that, games. Part of that, yeah. I love. I love the fact that you can get Saturn ports on the Switch and on other modern co consoles. It's PC. great. You should take advantage of those opportunities any chance you get. Um, and but if you are looking to try before you buy, you know, uh, all I can say is ODEs are great. <laughs> and I'll move right along. You know, um, yeah. it was a it was a fun panel, and we of course we had uh, Adam join us for that as well. So yeah, we, we it was really just... nice. We hit a magazine, signed a bunch of magazines. That was cool. Sunday nice. morning. So Saturday, I was like eyeing this copy of Outrun, the Japanese version mm. of Out Sega Ages Outrun, on a Saturday. They wanted ninety dollars for it, and I don't wow. know. I, I I was just like, I almost would pay ninety dollars for for that. But oh. and, and no, I like almost it's that good. It's just and I know why it's that good. But I mean, I was just like, nah. I I, I have you know I have some money in my pocket. I don't want to blow that much on one game. Mm -hmm. So then Sunday morning, I wake up and Pat's like, oh, I got something for you by the way. And he goes over to his collection and pulls out Sega Ages Outrun and gives it to me. And I was just what like, I was just like, yeah. I was just like, Pat, you don't have to. You don't have to do this. This is your collection. He's like, yeah, but you're the racing, you're the racing game guy. I, I'm not even that into racing games, right? Yeah, well, well, yeah I, I got it for a fairly good price, and it's like I didn't really like somebody gave it to you it. or something, right? Yeah, yeah. So the reason why this game, and and I was talking to James from Sega guys, and he explained to me like the reason why this game is ninety bucks. Mm -hmm. This game is even better than the arcade, like the original arcade. The original oh, arcade yeah, outrun, 60, frames per, second, 60 right? frames per second. Like this, this is almost like the definitive version of outrun. And he's like, when yeah. you play it, uh, it's got all the music. It's got, it's got like other unlockables and stuff like that. And it's just like literally flush with, uh, the original arcade was only 30 frames per second, but this one has mm -hmm. 60 frames per second. And I guess that's what makes it so desirable. I didn't even know because frankly, when I've played Sega ages, it's been the U S version. And I just oh, never yeah. knew. That I never knew. Yeah, that's funny. It's one of those. It's one of those little Saturn nuggets of knowledge that I did not know. So I'm really, really thankful, Pat. Really glad to have that. Yeah, you super are nice. anytime, yeah. dude. Anytime. Absolutely. And I mean, um, I also happen to pick up a copy of Dragon Heart, which is pretty much the opposite of Outrun. It's not a great <laughs> game. <laughs> and but I, it's funny. It is one of Nuno uh, from the Junkyard's favorite games. Um, mm -hmm. It is. It's a. It's a somewhat decent, half decent side scrolling platformer kind of hack and slash game. And um, they wanted forty five for it, but I got it for twenty because it was Sunday. So there you go. Um, I'll. Uh, shh, that's the end of the article. So I'll just show fo show folks my. Uh, did did you have any other pickups, Pat, that you wanted to show off, like no, show and tell? No, there's only these two. Okay, oh, so yeah, there's or these three. So the 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 Toki Meki Snatcher, and of course the the cool thing Connor gave me. That's the the Mr. K. So like I honestly like when I got this, I was like, that's it. I, I'm not buying anything else. I'm done. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> I got. Yeah, I, I also like, got. There's my budget. There's my budget. I also budget. got uh, Toe Jam and Earl. 
back in the groove, which was like a limited the run. Big toe. Yeah, mm. this is actually toe brand new. I, I, it up. I actually just unsealed it, but it was like a sealed copy. I'm gonna play that with uh, Jesse because there's like couch co-op. Oh, jam, that, that looks like jam fun. Jam those toes um, in my face. I also pick. I also did something funny. I uh, so so my my son Jesse, he brought his Pokemon cards to school, and they mysteriously disappeared. Um, I think a lot of folks can probably relate to that. At, at, yep. or, you know, to some degree Zodia, and, and, uh, I and I, it's, it's just kind of like cards. it's the hard lesson that you have to learn the hard way so anyway I uh I spent like Sunday morning, like three hours on Sunday morning, just going through this bin of base set Pokemon cards. And there was mm. a dude that came up. His name was John. He's from Houston. He came up and sat down next to me. He's like, you want help? And I was like, sure. I won't say no. So we were just going through these base set cards together and like picking out uh, evolutions, you know? And yeah. so I was able to, I was able to get his, my son's like base set back. Of course, Pat tells oh, me after he's nice. like, "Oh, I have, I have all those cards, Dave. You literally, could have just asked I have, me." <laughs> I have a giant box. That box that I told Dave about that yeah. has literally base sets of base sets of base sets of base sets in them. So it's like, wow. like he he plays he plays tournament stuff with modern cards, but he's taken an interest in collecting old vintage cards. And yeah, mm-hmm. those are the ones that he brought to school and they disappeared. So he was really sad when. So when I brought this home to him he almost was in tears like he he was so happy he was he was literally like beside himself and he just like That's stayed nice. in his bedroom all evening looking at the cards Dad of the so right there i'm glad that i'm glad and then i also yeah. picked up this little guy for for juni uh it's a pichu they the, i'm only showing yeah, this to you guys because so my kid my kids literally were like daddy could you do show and tell with our stuff on shiro show so they uh, wanted me to show you guys oh there's one so, yeah. thing that I, I did get That's another yeah, I it's got a, a, cute I got a Nick plushie from the person across from us. I forgot what their name was, but yeah, I have a. It's like this. Uh, you know that Pikachu? That's like a fake one. It's like a, <laughs> like the fake Pikachu Pokemon. I got one of those ones. Oh, Miku or something. Yeah, whatever it was. But yeah, I got one of those. Mm-hmm. It's in the room, but I don't want to get up and get it. But mm-hmm. yeah, they were they were like a booth neighbor from us. So it's like, I was like, I'll, I'll just buy from me. They're pretty. They're pretty cool, and I wanted a little plush. Yeah, so we got to see a bunch of people at the show, um, and Sasquatch was one of them from our Discord community who was able to actually come out, and, and we hung out for a little bit, and we were able to talk to him. That was awesome. I love seeing folks from our actual Discord community, you know, not just YouTube celebs and stuff like that, but, like, pe- real people from our Discord community who we, we see in the chat every week on the Shiro show and we talk to in the Discord. That's That was awesome. We met, so we, we met new friends, too. This one guy that was obsessed with soccer wars. He, hey, oh, yeah, out, yeah, like, yeah, at yeah. The end like because at the end when both adam and dave left it was just yeah. me yeah honestly i was pretty i was pretty tired and burnt out and i was not feeling that great mm-hmm. so like people were asking hey you want to go play rock bands like yeah I, I can't really i'm i'm kind of burnt out and tired and i have to mm-hmm. watch the booth and stuff so i was like oh it's it's fine but yeah the, the guys came up to me and uh i forgot what his name was let me double check what his name was off the top was of it my craig head. was it the dude uh, i can't was name uh i have his name yeah craig craig, craig was a big soccer wars fan i had yeah. on my phone i've been my phone is craig soccer wars but yeah he really cool dude him and his friend and of course sasquatch helped me load up the pvms and we only had two trips of all that stuff into my brother's truck nice and just drove off so massive shouts out thank you sasquatch for that really yeah sorry i help. couldn't be there for that i would have if i it's could cool. have it's cool. But, uh, I'm, I'm used to it, but yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, Jiggle. Uh, he mentioned Slave Zero, uh, Slave Zero X. Uh, uh-huh. I ordered that on Amazon. It got delayed till April, so I haven't had a chance to play it yet. So I'm waiting on that. Oh, okay. So yeah, I just want to answer him. He was talking about that. I saw that in the oh, chat. Absolutely. We but also yeah, no, did I appreciate that. We also did try to get some lapel mics from Best Buy, but they oh, that it was, was a, a it was a total fail. Like we got these oh. Rode mic, we we wanted to get the DJI ones, but they didn't have them, so we got the Rode mics. And I don't know for whatever reason they wouldn't work with either of Pat's or my phone. So we did yeah. want to give folks better audio quality, and we tried, but we failed. So yeah, we're, we'll like, we'll like have we, better. We tried all the cords. It's like the <laughs> iPhone. It's like because we thought it was bluetooth it's like oh no you yeah. have to hook it up or something like, oh well you need to get the adapter online for that it's like oh you want to use aux you have to get the yeah. camera adapter for the eye it's like oh well, my god the good the and good like, news is yeah. the good news is we did get the good ones uh and we'll have yeah, them we get for the next DVI time mic twos. and once we have those that means we'll be able to do more like floor interviews with we'll, like vendors That's at cool. booths and so we'll be able to do more proper be interviews because they'll have like the puff pop screen and we'll be able to like literally uh you know 
do proper interviews so it'll be great yeah and the cool um, thing is that uh we can actually either easily easily plug into the soundboard because it has a yeah. a, a 3.5 millimeter in on the mic itself so mm-hmm. we can literally hook up through bluetooth pop the uh the mic input in and then mm-hmm. we'll get better sound yep nice yeah that'll be great uh yeah so we got still got a bit more to talk about so moving right along shiro joins sega guys to talk western library western saturn library this was uh this is me and nick uh, and we were talking about, there's another myth that pervades that I'm not, I don't think it's a myth, but I mean, it's a, it's a popular idea that if you want to collect for Saturn, it's all Japanese, you know, it's the Japanese library. That's great. And the Western library is junk. Right. But of course, mm-hmm. like that's never true of almost any console, right? You have your garbage, you have your shovelware, and then you have like your good games. Right. And I think that we all kind of agreed, even Nick and, uh, all of us agreed that like the Saturn does have like several bangers in the u.s library in fact i would go as far as to say that at least half of them uh you know of the 200 and some odd games that we got are like really solid games you know yeah there's there are some that you know are are, are going to end Mr. up being Bones like doesn't count on that one yeah I, no i wouldn't i wouldn't rank that <laughs> rank okay, that so up sure there. Was on the other end of it Mi- the yeah end. mr mr bones has a lot of character right it's got a, it's got a lot of uh mm-hmm. charm to it no, but it, it is does. definitely it definitely ranks in the filler area but i mean you know like um i mean even dan for example really loves uh what is it sky target right and there's a game yeah. that some people might rank that as filler but like not for dan right for you really love that yeah, game it's right? fun. like i know it's not a masterpiece but yeah right. i have a lot of fun with it and i, and I nobody, love the music and... yeah nobody really mm-hmm. talks about nobody really talks about fighting vipers either when they talk fighting games yeah. on saturn there's oh, it's and always like virtual fight games. and that's when your favorite I and it's a fighting. It's a great fighting game too. So it's yeah. like when you look it has at this, so much personality. It's yeah. the music again is is great. It feels so good to play. It has unlockable stuff in the Japanese version. Um, so and uh, I guess it has some unlockable stuff in the U.S. version too. So yeah, I I love that game. But yeah, it but doesn't yeah. get talked about. Enough. So so I think I think the the thing is again is it's just like another another myth that we kind of want to flip and and yeah. stop like having that pervade and just be so everywhere you know where everybody says oh the the sat the u.s saturn or the western mm-hmm. i should say western saturn library sucks because it doesn't it's just yeah you're gonna get a ton more great games mm-hmm. if you in, invest in the japanese library if you if you research and look into the japanese library but for what it is for us kids growing up that had saturns and stuff like that it wasn't you know it wasn't as grim as people make it out to be, you know. Prodbull said, "Is touring car on the banger side?" Yeah, I'd have to say for, it is. Right, I mean, for, I'm glad that you think so. Yes, for me, I mean, touring car, <laughs> yeah. touring car is freaking awesome, right. and I mean, like, it, it's I've always loved it, but now I love it so much more just because of the community mm-hmm. aspect, um, you, you know. And that's what's so important about these these things. It's it's we're not just relying on nostalgic memories from our teenage years we're actually building new memories now with like these community yeah. events where we can actually say like i don't know i can look back on this and say we had such a blast playing sega touring car and kind of like in 2024 in 2024 discovering it together as yeah. a community and realizing that hey they were doing something here they 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 actually were deliberately making this game the way it is because it was a concerted effort you know to make a mm-hmm. a grip racer and we all loved it so there you go uh, in fact joe who joe sega rpg fan who loves sega rally told me that it almost the game almost ruined him for sega rally because he went back yeah. to sega rally and it like feels so slow feels and different. and like floaty yeah whereas like sega right. touring car is just really really fast um Mm -hmm. but yeah go check out our our uh friends the sega guys james and dan they do a great podcast and this was a fun one to be a part of uh so that and and you get to also hear panda uh um, talk about a lot of fun he he does like a the movie guy voice (laughs) it was it was a fun one uh, Tokyo Highway Battle '97. Oh, I just want to say something real quick. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, go ahead. Mm. What's so up? So I forgot two. I forgot two. Uh, two shouts out. So, uh, um, uh, uh, uh slow. Uh, Sass watching time mentioned that uh, we that Saramar was there. They came the next day. Yeah. And they came by our booth and we got them. Uh, and we gave him a signed magazine. He gave me this cool little uh, this cool little PC Engine keychain that oh. I put on my keychain. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. He was a super nice guy. Yeah, we showcased his uh, showcased his game uh, FX Unit Yuki on the PVM, so or the on the Dreamcast. 
the CRT on the Dreamcast. So yeah. you really like that. Uh, really nice dude. Always been really nice to me throughout the years when I talked to him. And then uh, someone named uh, Sherry Jordan, who was in our booth, got this uh, little little stuffed uh, crocheted thing. So that was really cool. Yeah. Crocheted Pokemon. So. Oh, there you go. Little MeQ or whatever. MeQ, yeah. So, yeah, that's all I want to go. I forgot to mention that. So, yeah. also, we had a bunch of people come by your booth. Uh, Happy Console Gamer. Um, uh, a lot of people. Chris Tang, of course. Yeah, uh, Chris Tang. Chris Tang and his friend. And his friend, um, the guy that worked on the. the there, was, there was a dude. What was his name again? He, he worked. MeQ. Thank you, Analog. MeQ. Uh, Pat, he worked on the Atari Jaguar, but he also worked on. He, he oh, yeah, that, guy. that one guy. He's like, he's like, oh, yeah, I, I just come here now. He's like, he worked on Atari Jaguar, a bunch of Saturn stuff. God, I forget like, his name, what? though. And he had a friend who worked with uh, Real Time Associates that did uh, Bug. <laughs> By the way, before yeah, yeah. I forget, before I forget, while we were talking about Sega Touring Car, and we were talking about the community and everything like that. I wanted to shout Moose. Moose Tracks, who's right here in the chat, he did an amazing job on these awesome little patches that he sent yeah. out to the winners of the uh, competition. And so I really wanted to take that opportunity to shout him publicly. You know, Those um, are cool. it's not only is he super talented and uh, does excellent work, but I mean, what a nice little perk for folks who, uh, you know, participated in the cha in the challenge, you know, so thank you so much, Moose. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, and you just volunteering to do that was awesome. Made it made it so much you, more fun. Yeah. So. Akmal had um, a question for you in chat, Dave, by the uh, way. He, answer he is asked. yes. Answer is yes. Okay. I think, uh, actually, I think the Saturn US, I think the Western Saturn library is better than the Western N64 library. Hot take, maybe? I don't know. I don't dislike N64, don't get me wrong. I love N64, and I think there are tens of games that are good on i think there are I think, tens. Of games. I think there are several stacks of n64 games that are great but but again i worked in retail at a time when the n64 was on the market and everything and uh, i definitely felt like the the good games were kind of like few and far in between especially towards mm -hmm. the end there um it could just be my bias for dreamcast and everything like that but but again i I think the sat the Western Saturn library is quite good. Um, of course, it's not as as great as the Western PlayStation library because the PlayStation enjoyed one, two, three, almost four more years on the market than the Saturn did. You know, so for what you get, you know, for the time that the Saturn was on the market, I think the Saturn's Western library was great. Um, but I love all the all the fifth gen consoles. Let's be honest. I, I even love the N sixty four. Uh, I love playing, uh, what is it, uh, F-Zero X, you know? Mm. Um, and and uh, what's that other one that's so good? Uh, Sin and Punishment, really good. Sin and Punishment, uh, Bangayo is oh. one of my favorite ones on there. Bangayo, oh yeah, on the N64, that's right. You even saw a copy of that on the yeah, floor. $300 yeah, $300 three hundred dollars Only $300. No, thank you. No, yeah, no, thank, thank you. you. No, thank you. Um, we kind of have to go quick on this one. It's Tokyo yeah. Highway Battle 97, Best of Saturn. Uh, if you're going to play it at all, I recommend playing the uh, translated version that Malenko did. Which and is where the screenshots are from. Where the, this article. is where this title screen is from. I, I recognize that logo because I did it. I helped him mm -hmm. make that logo. And uh, and uh, he won, I believe. He won uh, first place for the... Uh, for the hacks, the patches, and translations, the localization, cool. yeah, yeah, and uh, and and it's a great. Uh, I think there's even Craig in there. Craig Stadler. Craig Stadler is in the game. Is you in the game. Yeah, played him. Play. And this is the pre spiritual, or I don't know, the the literal, I guess, precursor to Tokyo Extreme Racer. So great, mm -hmm. great series, folks. Should check it out. Uh, and then last but not least, before we wrap this up, is uh, oh no, Second it's not last. last it's not Second last. last. But, yeah. Second to last two. I need to. I oh okay, it's there. Good. So yeah, Robert Leyland. This is uh, just adding to our interview archive uh, with Panda's blessing. This is an interview that he did in March of 2018 with Robert Leyland of uh, Jumpin' Jack Software. They did Toe Jam and Earl. They did Racing Aces on the Genesis, and then they did uh, Congo and Gen War. And so they were early Tiger Team developers. Um, they had to work with that janky, you know, unit that was kind of like a big cube. This was even like pre-Sophia. Um, I really like the way that he goes into like really in depth, like into like the minutia of like the way that VDP one was essentially just a line drawer, you know, and yeah. it would draw several lines and that would equal like a, 
a sprite, which would equal a polygon. I mean, he had, his, the way that he looks about looks at things and talks about them are is really interesting. It's fascinating, and so it's a great interview. The audio is a little bit. Uh, I don't know. There yeah, were, there Panda was, was recording in a bathroom. It sounded like something like that. Robert yes. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, although like if you depending on what speakers you listen to it on, there are some like audio glitches here and there. But the content is what's important. And I, I for for any developers in the Saturn uh, scene, uh, the folks on Sega Extreme and stuff like that, this is one to listen to. It's really fascinating. Yeah. It's yeah, a fun. I mean, about six years ago. Yeah. It's, yeah, it was from 2018, right? 20, um, 2018 is when we did this. Yeah, so we're just adding Which, it here it's, for redundancy. It's honestly, it's in, yeah, well, this is the first time I listened. I listened to it earlier today. It was the first time I ever heard it. Good. And That's what it was for. That's why we did yeah, it. Then. So <laughs> it thanks just, for, for putting it up, Dave. Yeah. And I think it has stuff that was cut from, the, uh, cut from the actual video that Pandemonium did. So Right. Okay. Yeah, he kind yeah. of uploaded it subsequently uh, in its full form. Um, but again, with the way that YouTube works and everything like that, I'm just wanting things to be in more than one place and, and it allows us it to be on our podcast as well. So it's on Podbean mm -hmm. now too. So folks can listen to it in the audio yeah. format and being in more than one place. It's, it's good for preserving these stories. So I was really happy that, that Nick was, uh, granted us permission to, to do that. Um, definitely go listen to it. It's it's great. Oh, and and then ch while you're at it, check out some of the other archive interviews. We have T.J. Davis, we have Tom Kalinsky, we've got uh, we've got uh, Sega Lord X, Sega Lord X. Video. We've got uh, the dude who did uh, who did the graphics and the the box design and Ken stuff Lowe. like that. Ken Lowe. Yeah. And there's oh. even more. There's Eric Amarez of Duck Corporation. There's David uh, Warhol from Real Time Associates. So go check out the and archive. We still have, we still have our interviews that aren't even on in there like the this is true like the one with scavenger that's right we will we release a video with that uh kind of as a, its own video but yeah um we have we do have we are sitting on a couple other interviews that i'm going to be adding to that uh periodically um and then finally is There's our one big mama jump one i eventually want to release if we could figure out a way to do i know it. right <laughs> i really Don't... want to because that's that honestly that's probably my best the best interview we've ever done. Like you Suzuki, opinion. right? You know, no, I'm just kidding. Yes, yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't get no, you Suzuki. Dude, no. <laughs> but no, that was but that's still one of my favorite I... interviews. Uh, okay, so last but definitely not least is an article that Dan wrote up right and published right before the show went live, and that's a new yes, cheat code did. found after 29 years in Shinobi mm -hmm. Legion's debug mode. Go ahead, tell us about it. Okay, yeah, so uh, Shinobi Legion came out uh, pretty much the Saturn's launch year in, in the West in 95. Um, you know, 2D platformer. Uh, a number of cheat codes have been known for it for years with, uh, you know, giving you 99 lives and a bunch of uh, knives to throw in and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But no one had never known about the debug code, as far mm -hmm. as we know, until now, uh, when uh, now prolific Saturn hacker Bo Bales started poking around the code, and he found, uh, through his magic that he does, uh, that there was one hidden uh, input sequence that no one knew about. And it is a doozy. It's a huge 40-button input sequence. Uh, you have to go to the options screen, go to the music, select stage 2-3, go to the uh, sound effects, select number 6, then go, then highlight the word audio, hold the L button, and then input a 40 button sequence that we have in my store here. Or you can look on Bo Bales' uh, Twitter account. Uh, wow. Which, which is uh, Memory uh, Falls, I think. Yeah, memory, memory underscore Fallen. Yeah. Um, yeah, so crazy code. I, I can't imagine why it wasn't discovered before now. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I mean, the Bo chances are it. probably low to randomly guess that. Uh, yeah, I would I would say. Um, so if you do that, then when you're in uh, the actual game, you can press the R button to bring up a menu, a debug menu, and it's got a bunch of different options for uh, selecting any level, changing your number of lives and continues, giving yourself more health, that sort of thing. Also, while you're playing, you can hold down the L, R, and Z buttons to just have, like, no clipping, just move through uh, walls, um, and floors and whatnot uh, yeah, freely, so, so that's them. yeah, that's cool. Which you know, a lot of debug codes would do that, uh, especially on the Genesis. So yeah, um, now if that cheat code sounds a little unwieldy to you to actually execute, don't worry, Bo Bales has you covered. Um, he has uploaded a patch to Sega Extreme's resource section, 
so you can just patch your game and it'll just act like the debug code has already been entered and it's nice. active for you. So there you go. Um, you do need, it come, he has two patches. You need to pick the right one for your version of your game. There's uh, one for the North American version and one for the PAL version. He doesn't have a patch of the Japanese version. He didn't test the Japanese version, but um, Private Eye did say in our Discord server that it does, the code does work. A Japanese version, so maybe he'll he'll update the uh, the patch to add that in as well. Um, we he did upload a video to X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, which I I grabbed and threw into our website, so we can mm -hmm. check that out too. Um, and he does go into more detail on how he found this code and uh, what the debug mode does in, on his blog. Mm -hmm. So definitely check out Bo Bale's blog. I, I didn't want to steal his thunder and reproduce everything he wrote. So I just I just wanted to mention that. Um, and his blog, his blog is uh, it's thirty two bits dot substack dot com. Right, right. thirty two, yeah. and he names it Rings of Saturn. So right. um, yeah, uh, very cool that he found this. I, I love hearing about the, these all these secrets he keeps finding he's found a bunch of stuff that i haven't written about right. on the website because i don't want it to be like we're just the bow bales news network you know but so i mean yeah it's fascinating most interesting, interesting ones uh, but definitely like follow him on 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 x and uh to get all of his many updates and on, on all the different things that he's found uh it's super cool uh, well, i think on one of the more recent too. things uh yeah he's working on more stuff um, we recently wrote about how he found that uh, Clockwork Night 1 had been mm -hmm. hiding in the North American version of Clockwork Night 2 this whole time. Right. He just put in a, a cheat code that he found. Um, so that was a super cool one, too. So, yeah, there you go. Shinobi Legions or Shinobi X if Excellent. you're in PAL territory. Shinobi Triple X. And, uh, you know, you can get all of this and more Saturn news at SegaSaturnShiro.com. So just mm -hmm. uh, yep. stay tuned to our site. I don't know that you we have like a rss feed for that or anything like that i'm not uh, i'm not you can subscribe to the site i know a lot of people have. can you uh... subscribe to the site yeah, yeah some people have to... yeah they get emails for that so i see people talking about that nice nice okay how do i tell people to do that <laughs> like how do people do uh, that uh fuck uh, I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah it's uh -huh. like you can do it but we don't know how to how you can do somebody it said uh, they, somebody said they sub to the site and they, they get sub to it. yeah i mean technically it's a blog so you would, you would, there would be some kind of RSS feed, but I'm not yeah, sure. If anybody is, if anybody's smart, unlike me, let me know if you just could make it your homepage. That's what I that. recommend. Just make Sega Saturn <laughs> Shiro your homepage. You so every time you open up your browser, you have new Saturn news. Yeah, why do you need to go anywhere else? Satan news. And, uh, you get articles from that we've done news stories, reviews, best of Saturn series. Thanks to Peter. All these great articles. Thanks to Dan. You've got four different podcast Everybody. shows, including this weekly live show, the interview archive, editor's corner, and our mainline podcast where we deep dive games. You've got videos on our website, uh, Panamonium, uh, early access if you are a patron uh, of and you support us financially. Um, you've also got a resource page, which is amazing. There's a Netlink site, thanks to Raimi, uh, that uh, allows you to browse our website on your Saturn. You've got an mm -hmm. online setup guide that'll get you up and running online in 2024 with your Sega Saturn and a Netlink or X-Band modem. We've got a Saturn archive hosted by Saturn Memories, uh, which has almost every tiny little bit of minutia that you could possibly think of in relation to the Sega Saturn, um, including, you know, original sites and, you know, the sites of, uh, of celebrities that were in Saturn games. It's ridiculous. Like check out his archive. It's amazing. You got a fan mm -hmm. translation page hosted by private eye, uh, which if you want to know any project that has been worked on is being worked on or is about to be released or has been released, check out this. It gives you all the information and he is just up to the minute, you know, and as soon as something is released, I look over here and he's already got it on our site. Uh, yeah. We got uh, homebrew game games which is on me and <laughs> i need to finish that up but i am i'm almost done with that uh, after the okay, after good. all the winners from the competition i'm almost done working on that page and then of course we got saturn and film and tv uh by death scythe uh and then saturn sales bin uh is uh sega steve sales bin and he's added some listings to this look at the bottom here he has a ton of japanese saturn games and prices and uh 
uh, also condition and whether they include the obi uh, and then a little send inquiry link so if you're looking for some japanese saturn games here you go uh He's sega sega steve Thank is a you, reputable Wiener seller for the Patch $1.99 fun. oh my gosh <laughs> we've also got I a magazine bad. and uh oh yeah Pat snatcher fund <laughs> yeah i i feel bad i feel bad though because like uh because i'm actually cannot do snoring tonight because my setup is like completely destroyed right now yeah because i do yeah. and i haven't time to set up but to, next week i will stream snatcher that is a promise um so tomorrow next week we'll stream snatcher i need it i'm redoing my entire desk area like mm -hmm. i'm getting a new desk i'm getting a, a new tv what i'll talk about mm -hmm. so i will stream it next week so i i'm sorry about this week guys my entire stuff's going to be torn so down it there will be nothing recognizable what's left so I will yeah, be streaming next, next week, week too. Actually, my uh, my wife and kid are going to New York. Um, it'll just be me and my daughter for like a weekend. And uh, once I get her, probably after she goes to bed, I'll do some streaming. And I think Chrono was gonna was gonna be part of that uh, mod or whatever on the on the YouTube stream. And so I'll, I'll I'll let folks know more information once we set something in stone. Oh. But yeah, looking forward to this coming weekend. Not not uh, sorry, not this weekend, but next weekend. Um, I'll have some time to stream. Um, we have a magazine and they, we still have some magazines, believe it or not. We have uh, several of the, uh, I don't know, B rank, I guess, that just have like a tiny little numbering issue somewhere in there. Mm. Uh, other than that, they're perfect. We gave out, Pat and I gave out like a crap ton of blooper mags at the at the Game On Expo and we signed them. So those are floating out there now. Uh, the issue with those is they didn't put like the little number one fanzine for Sega Saturn news reviews and yeah. retrospect. So it was just, just blank on area. Yeah, so we ended up just using that uh, as signing area, and that was fun. Do we but still you have got more of those. We st we still have more of those for our okay. next con, <laughs> and we still have more. Uh, like I say, of the prepackaged, ready to ship out uh, five dollar mags. If you guys want one. Go ahead. You can still buy buy them. I'm staring at like I don't know. There's probably like 40 left. So once those are gone, they are gone. I've seen these things pop up on eBay already. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so but yeah, if you if you guys want like wow. an autographed one or want to see us in person, mm -hmm. we will be able to get, be, get a more like a signed personalized copy. So definitely uh, definitely really making uh, incentivizing you guys to go visit us at cons mm -hmm. where we're at. We, we'd like to do more cons though. Yeah, it would be fun. In fact, speaking of cons, I'll, I'll leave the rest of the website for you guys to explore yourself. Just definitely sub to our Discord because that's where all the conversation is. Pat's going to Game On Expo in Germany. Or not Game On. Game Games on Com. I went to that. Games Com Game in Germany. Cool. And I believe he's going to powwow with uh, what, Momphis and... Uh, and uh xenos yeah, xenos yeah so that's gonna be fun he's yeah, gonna do a, to... he's gonna deliver a panel in, in german <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> no. hell no that's not happening no hell no hell no hell but no. no uh i'm going to uh i i am there are talks about doing a panel uh it's really preliminary preliminary i don't know what that's going to be like or if it's possible but i will talk to memphis about that he is the my contact for that so mm -hmm. i'll talk to him about that um i would like to do a panel we have some pretty big ideas for when we want to do i don't know how doable it would be i'd have to reach out to certain people right but if we could do it it would probably be the the the, the greatest saturn panel ever and i feel bad dave's <laughs> not going to be there to experience it yeah but i mean you know I don't speak German either, so Pat would have to be like my translator the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much gonna be like just speaking German. But I think Audi, like, I, I think Audi and John Lineman will be there, so that that'll be fun. Get, yeah, catch no, up I'm with definitely them. gonna meet up with them. See, maybe we could go and get a get a schnitzel. <laughs> schnitzel. Uh, have John have John take you to that like military military base commissary where they have like long box Saturn games. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm sure he'll let me go to his spot but yeah. yeah I'll I'll talk to him I'll talk to see what's going on I'll reach out to him in advance see what we could do sure. see what hangs we could do if we could do stuff we'll figure it out But yeah uh yeah auch Papetsu Hit up the Teespring store buy some merch Definitely. like this awesome hoodie Yep which I'm Cream, borrowing creamy from creamy 3D graphics hoodie. really 3D nice graphics. it fits pretty good on yeah. you um so yeah so yeah check out the merch store we have shirts we have mm -hmm. mugs if you want to get your coffee on or whatever tea or whatever Do you want to stretch and, uh, out our patrons Do we what now 
shout out our patrons? Oh, definitely. Uh, and we are about to right now. I am, uh, unless you've got it like right there. I'm right uh, here. Okay. Got it right okay, there. I got it right here. Okay, here we go. I'm just okay. getting there. I'm just getting there. If my browser. Very organized. You're on yeah. Zero no, show. I knew I forgot something. Okay, so filters, sort by tens and twenties. Tens and twenties. No, so so basically, for folks who don't know, we read off everybody who uh, is a patron at the ten dollar or up level. We read your name off live on the show every week. Um, and those folks, those fine folks, are a murder of crows, Blue Moon ninety five, Casual Seth, Cerulean, Chris Piper, Chris nineteen ninety seven double X, Daniel Fredrickson, David Zaney, Derek Pascarella, A Team. Emerald Nova, fat friend, frat, frat, fat frat, drunk frat, friend, frat, frat, otaku, frat, frat, frat. <laughs> gem clash or rank, Ian Keg, Jay Hersey, Johannes Fetz, Lion Wing Publishing. That's a new one. Um, that or at least I, I don't. Yeah, that is a new one to me. Uh, Mamfus, of course. Michael Sabag, Normal Guy, Newt Rages, Robert Ramsey, Rowan Dink, Sega Steve, Stone Man, Tanuki Trev, the Sega Guys, and Young Money Swee. Um, that we have several thank you other, much, everyone. thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. You guys helped us go to games on game on expo. You guys help us do stuff like the net link, uh, the net link modems. And uh, honestly, you help us host the podcast and, and, uh, the, and the website. website. And yeah. and uh, we have so many other people that support us at the five dollar levels and the three dollar levels. We really appreciate you guys too. And your name will be in the credits of the show. Um, if you can't afford to support us through Patreon, that's okay. Actually, what we really care about more than anything is you guys just being a part of the community. So join our Discord community and you know participate in something, either in the online tournaments or just uh, you know they, there's like a Saturn music pop quiz thing you know, or you guys can just hang out and uh, and talk Saturn. Uh, that's what we really appreciate. That's what we really love. Um, check out the Sega guys too. They're amazing. They make great content and they're like uh, almost like a brother or sister site. Are they the brother or are they the sister? I don't know, but they're, they're, oh, they're on Twitter and they're on YouTube. <laughs> they're, yeah. the, they kind of use our website for their website. Cause they keep uh, putting their yeah. uh, articles up on our well, site. Yeah, we yeah. It's awesome. Absolutely. Their, their, their videos are well researched and those, those scripts make excellent articles. So I mm -hmm. kind of invited them to do that and I think it's great. Um, so yeah, um check out their stuff and anything else we want to plug before we skedaddle here i think that's it i think that's thanks it thanks for yeah. watching everybody oh thanks for joining i do watching. want to say i do want to say go check out sega extreme and go download some of those awesome fan yes. patches and those yes, awesome absolutely. homebrew Home games brew. we've been playing them for months now <laughs> you know mm -hmm. ch testing them out and uh reviewing them but you guys need to go check them out because there's so much cool stuff for you to discover on the saturn and until yeah. next time this is saturn dave dantrax and trainoco reminding you what must that play you saturn. must saturn. play sega saturn. <laughs> saturn and we'll catch you guys next time see ya <laughs>